Welcome back to the table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Whoa>. that one. <laughs> also, also, we've lost preview out here, just so you know. Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> Wine, Tyler! We, we have fun here. We have fun. So, I don't have my character sheet. That's, uh, oh, it's over, over there. Over there, Hold I on. believe. Where, where Man, the we, like all sorts of ill-prepared. One minute. <laughs> well, I had to grab my paper. My, my psychic... Abilities Use to. The force. He's hovering it over. My God, people! If you could only see what the cameras aren't seeing, it's amazing! Got it. Wow! Is that yours? No, thank you. Ah. Uh, it's supposed to be nice in that. Well, it's about this. Okay. It works. So yeah. Um. How does Nick sound? I, I sound great. I believe they can. I believe he sounds <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, because we spent God knows how long yep. <laughs> fixing that. So last time, uh, you guys were nearly killed, but well, you were nearly killed by a house. By paint, I think. Well, could I, I think it was like blood. Who blood knows? Paint. I don't know. Did you watch Velvet Buzzsaw before you planned that encounter? Oh, no, I knew about it, but <laughs> I didn't watch it. Okay. <laughs> you were aware of the blood dimension? Nah, dude, I was, I was reading up on Baba Yaga's, and I was just like, nah, fuck it, we can work with this. It... it, it What's Jake it's Gyllenhaal fun. been doing lately? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, uh, nearly killed by a house, and then we got really froggy. Yep. Yep. And left the woods with the most neutral ending we could have. <laughs> hey, man, sometimes that's all it needs. Uh, so with that, you're, you guys finally find yourselves back on the road. Valtar is now pushing the cart with Chromagill sitting in the back. Still. Whee! She's she's okay. Like like I said, because of one of her feet, she's able to like just do this with no problem whatsoever. This is just like picking up maybe like a backpack to her. Uh, she a big lady. Yep, she big. Uh, so you guys uh, get back on the road. Uh, nightfall, like the sun is beginning to set over the trees by this point. You could probably estimate it's like seven o'clock at night. And you're starting to see the outcroppings of what looks like uh, smoke fumes coming from chimneys. So you are fastly approaching Vespa Bay at this point. The jungle path is starting to return back onto the flat plateau from where you guys started from in the begin with. Like, you went up to the northern path, which is on a little bit of a cliffside. And behind you, you can see the beat. You can see uh, the trail that would have you would have taken if you went to the beach side. Uh, is, there, anyone... is everybody having fun there? <laughs> I mean, you want to roll a perception check? Yes. Pro Miguel is curious about the roads less traveled. Wake's got a nat 20 on that perception check. Okay. Uh, uh, 16 for me. Oh, okay. An eight. An eight? All right, Morgan doesn't care. He's just like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I've got my high t my high pr uh, perspective from on top of the cart. So and Valtar is and Valtar's pushing the cart, so that's not happening right now. <laughs> oh. uh, you guys see that there looks like uh, little pits of fire out in the middle of the beach, uh, but there are these very oddly shaped humanoid creatures standing before a barricade. Well, like a, ver a very haphazardly made barricade on the, the path on the beach. Well, it seems we missed a fun party. That looks like it would have been annoying to try and traverse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Any more annoying than densely gas-filled swamps. I like, liked those toads. They were a fun crowd. Uh, Fair enough. Wake yeah. says munching on the remainder of whatever grasshopper leg he has. Yeah, so while you're looking out, you see one of the people turn around, and from the uh, the shimmering uh, glint from their, uh, from their skin from the fireplace, you could faintly make out that they were Sahagan. Ah. Uh, uh, they're basically like mer people, but more feral. Oh, okay. Oh, I was, was, was going to say, with a 13 in history, do I know what a Sahag it is if he says that? I was going to say, for you, you'd have to roll dexterity. Uh, not dexterity. <laughs> uh, you'd have to roll. What are they? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> uh, you'd have to? have to roll knowledge uh, with disadvantage because you will do not know anything about the coastline. All right. Well, it still would have been about a 13. <laughs> I was going to say, roll dexterity. That brings a new meaning to think fast. Yeah, right. Yeah. I just think with my hands. It's totally normal for mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I think with interpretive dance. <laughs> uh, He's no. very unhappy. No, not not familiar with their lot. Uh, I do know that they have a particular taste for, was it hyenas that they ate in the, uh, yeah, hyenas. Yep. They like eating hyenas. Uh-huh. 
Morgan. I wonder if they taste <clears throat> funny. Morgan is just sitting on the on the cart right now, just like in a fetal position. Are we all just sitting on the cart while Voltara pulls? I would hope. No, you guys said you were walking. Just he was sitting. Yeah, Probably is, is sitting on the cart. I just imagine this like strain. Like, <laughs> you got it, girl. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so uh, the trees start to break away. You're seeing the coastline and the fog kind of roll in as you guys are going uh, down the road. Uh, you now start to see a uh, not a gate, but a little bit of a little bit of a barricade, like a wall separating the outside from the inside of the town. Uh, you are now nearing the gate of Vesa Bay, and which it totally just says on the sign, so it's not like you're going uh, somewhere that's fake Vesa Bay. Look, we're nearing the gate of Vesa Bay. It's right there. It says it on the. Oh, thank God. Uh, there is a pathway that leads you to a small checkpoint. There are two constables standing at the way uh, as you guys approach. Well, well, what's we'll all this then? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll like motion that way because those are probably people that we'd want to check in with all the stuff that we found. Yeah. Uh, the constables do actually like kind of like meet, greet you guys as you're walking closer. They kind of like ask Valtara to halt because they're kind of, like, now skeptical about the fact that a thing that was made for horses and out of nowhere, there's this giant dinosaur lady just pulling the cart in. With a mushroom sitting on top. Oh, he, they don't see that yet. They only see, <laughs> Val they only see Valtara and these two kind of walking into the, in from the mist. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, one of them steps forward to you, a half-orc gentleman in, a, uh, gray in gray attire, stands before you. Good evening, sir. Calrus of Vesa Bay, uh, Casa Bay, uh, bleh. Calrus of Vesa Bay Order. Uh, wake, uh, from right, back that way. Ah, uh, more of you then. Yeah. We've uh, gotten, we've gotten a few, uh, folks from right coming in now and again. We didn't expect anyone else to come in this late, though, what with the fog coming in and the contagion in the non-so-clean areas of the city. Well, we got a little sidetracked. Oh, yeah. dear, this... Poor fellow looks like he's on his last leg. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah, he's tougher than he looks. Mm. Don't worry about it. Hi, guys. What are the names? Where the hell were you? Don't worry about that either. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> there it is. I also came with this crew. The other constable kind of just like pulls out his rifle, just like seeing that. Bup, 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 bup. I mean you no harm. Yeah, don't worry about that either. I, I know Sir, I'm... I don't mean to alarm you, but that is sort of a worry, considering that the entire most of the town is infected with some kind of disease. Funny you should mention that, because the uh, events that waylaid us, we'd be here hours earlier, uh, but we found some supplies on our way in that might be of interest to you and your uh, people. He uh, looks to his other fellow constable, and he like goes through a little bit of a charter, uh, a little to look through some information. Oh, they'd be right, sir. There was uh, supposed to be a car coming in with medicine. Unfortunately, the uh, original couriers did not make it, nor did their horse. By the way, this is Voltara. I'm not a horse. I know. I'm introducing you. No, no, she, she says that to, she says <laughs> okay. that to Calrus. Calrus is just like, oh, we never, well, we know we have lizard folk coming in. We've never seen one like you before. I'm from further up north, sir. All right, well, if you wouldn't mind, we can take the card in, and I'd like all of you to at least stop by for a little bit of questioning before we let you into the city proper. Yeah, uh, sure, no problem. All right. Do you have a <coughs> inn around here, by the way? It's getting a little... We'll set you up after your testimony. Awesome. Like, this guy, like, if you want to roll an inside check on this guy to see if, like, there's anything wrong with this scenario. Uh, just generally check in, uh... Modified 20. Yeah, no, this Calrus guy just looks like he just wants to make sure you, like, now hearing that you guys are carrying contraband or, like, medicine that was supposed to be here hours ago, it's a relief, but it's also, like, we need suspicious. to... Suspicious. Yeah, it's suspicious. We need to at least see what the fuck is going on, especially the fact that you have a giant mushroom sneezing on people when a, when a city is being contaminated with some kind of disease. Like you do. So he brings you guys into uh, the checkpoint. They take the cart in. They start taking account for what all the uh, materials they had with you. Uh, 
They're going to uh, take you guys all in in the same room. Uh, Chromagill, you are now inside a what looks like a dark, dungeony little area where there are now people kind of like just coming in. Some of them are looking very sick. Uh, some of them actually have the same kind of complexion that looks like when Valtara casts a certain spell on, her, on enemies that you've seen before. Uh, uh, with a uh, modified 20 on insight, can I tell that these people are just, are they sick by natural causes? Is this a... Is this some sort of disease that I feel like I've seen before or understand in any? Uh, by the way they look, uh, you can kind of piece together a little bit that a lot of these folks look like they're having like starting symptoms of the uh, of the uh, blood cell barnacles, the stuff that uh, mm. the frogs were telling you about that started off with a vex cap. There's a parasite in these people, pretty much. Uh, since I haven't sneezed in here, not everybody could hear me yet, so I'm mostly just looking to Waken Morgan. I believe these people are very ill, and they will need help soon. Sounds about right. Hopefully the medicine we brought will help. Uh, so Calrus brings you into a room. He sits you down, and he brings out a, like a paperwork, and he has a stenographer with him uh, as well to get any accounts to see if they all at least add up. All right, well, gentlemen and lady... So, may I ask, what brought you on your way from right over to here? Were you on a guild quest, I assume? Uh, yeah. We're down this way, trying to seek passage over to the mainland in order to fulfill a contract. Hmm, we might have a little bit of a issue with that, but we can get to that a little bit later. I, I wouldn't mind giving you the information about that, but let's continue on with this first. So whereabouts did you find this turned over cart with all the supplies and where were the rest of its inhabitants that were supposed to bring it in? Uh, I believe we were, I wanna say about halfway through our trek through the Northern Path, the one that leads up the cliffside. And uh, on our way through there, we were ambushed by a pack of teleporting cats or little whippy cats with tentacles on their back. He oh, I still have one. Wait, no, I don't. Yes, I do. I still have one of them. So you you produce the yeah. I material. produce one of the displacer beast tentacles. I gave the other one to the uh, looks over to the, the stenographer. The stenographer kind of like look, rifles through paperwork. No, it checks out, sir. It turns out there was a couple of lizard folk that walked in, uh, saying that they were off on a guild mission to take care of that. Well, looks like they missed a few. Seems that way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which. We're not in any position to get back to right right now, but you might want to put out for a contract because there's some other stuff in the woods that might need to be looked at. And that is? Well, um, I believe a familiar of a dead witch is out there looking for vengeance. And what is this vengeance about, sir? Well, the... Uh, Wake is going to try. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to see if I can do this myself. Uh -huh. I'll do my own nat. I'll do my own intelligence roll. <laughs> well, basically, some witch lived out in the woods, and she was like, "Oh yeah, the woods are great." And then <laughs> people came in. And she was like, "No, get out!" But they're like, "No," and so she was like, "I'm going to curse you." And then the land was kind of cursed. But then she also died, and uh, her house is really mean, by the way. Tried to hurt us. It has frog paintings in it, but it's gone now. Don't worry about the house. What you got to worry about is her old pet frog. He turns and looks to you too. Chromagill is nodding sagely, as if like he is like, <laughs> mm hmm, absolute truths. I nearly died in that house. Trust the merfolk. The house is dead, though. Oh, by the way, they they gave you like some patch up work. They gave okay. you like food and water to make sure that you're still alive. Because <laughs> stabilize you. Right. Yeah. They they did their best to give you enough rations to stabilize you and like to patch you up mm -hmm. so you're not bleeding all over the place. <laughs> Thank you. Uh so Valtara kind of just like passes down her notebook. If you're looking for any more in specific details, this should at least help you. And he passes the book over to the stenographer, and he starts slipping through. You'll want to go to the very end of the book. I suppose we could have led with that, but... 
Well, for any finer details, yeah. at least. This is just like the layman. The things I may have missed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you found out something even bigger that you didn't mention because you're nodding sagely. So Valtara is just like, you're not going to say that? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Valtara will bring the constable up to speed. Uh, Calrus takes I don't want to sneeze on people. Everyone got a little mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, he now turns and looks to you after getting all that information from Valtara. So what's this then? Oh, uh, this is Chroma Gill. You already sneezed on this guy, so he can hear you, I think. Hello, yes, I am I am a Myconid. Uh, my, my, my people would like to spread our spores in order to communicate with other races, but it seems you are right now in the midst of a, of a quarantine, and that might come off as perhaps not the best idea in such situations. He like, just, he just like puts his finger to his ear and just like rubs it. It doesn't help. Fear not, I am in your mind, not your ears. That is a horror movie poster. Yes, right it there. is. <laughs> <laughs> but these seem to be started from a vex cap, a, a, a small mushroom that that is that gives parasitic life to, uh, on, on a host and just starts doing some really terrible things once it's ingested and starts growing. And that's that's where much of this sickness comes from. I'm I'm not sure why my my own mushroom brethren would be so harmful, but. Alas, that seems to be the situation among us. Oh, yeah, that big frog had those growing on him, didn't he? Yes, he did. Mm. Well, based on what you said, and uh, unfortunately, it's far too late to be putting out any sort of quest out for anyone from the guild to take care of this, but this will be noted, and we will bring this up, we will, we will bring this up to the people of right, and we will see if we can have any help be sent this way. Perhaps even the folks over at... He, like, looks over his notes again. Hmm. Okay, yes. Maybe those at the uh, Rally Raff Inn will be able to assist you. There's a couple of folks from Wright that came in, especially those folks I was talking about who took took care of the Displacer Beast issue. Well, to be fair, to uh, give all credit to them, we didn't run into that many of them. It would have been significantly worse if we had. Well. Oh, yeah. You're lucky you actually didn't decide to take the route to the south. Apparently, we've been having a lot of problems with Sahag and Highwaymen. Yeah, they're assholes. Well, based on what you've told me, and with all the information that was given, we can give all of this. We can give all of these notes to the hospital, especially give it to the one noble woman who came in here, but a few hours ago, and tried to assist us with the blood cell barnacle uh, infection. We will offer you all at least six hundred apiece for your time. Cool. They hand you six hundred gold. All right. So everyone gets 600 gold, yes. Hooray! I can't wait to figure out what Chromagill decides what he spends it on. Mm. Now, before you go out and start spending this, these, this reward, sirs and madam, there is a little bit of a quarantine going on, and we're going to have to have you be sectioned off to the more cleaner side of the city. That's fine with me. Do you need to check us out at all first? I mean, we were just out there. Uh, we will send you off to the hospital for a quick check, but beyond that, once that is done, you'll be fine. So long as you stick to the areas that we assign you to, you should be able to walk about the city with as much... We could walk about the city, do trade, and see if you could find a way to get yourselves over to... Well, where exactly are you trying to get a ferry towards? It's on my old sheet. Something Emerald Canal. Emerald Canal. He just like kind of like laughs and looks to the stenographer and the stenographer laughs a little bit as well. Well, you're gonna be walking it then, sir. I mean if that's a viable route across the water, then cool. Oh right, you're a merfolk, that makes sense for you. No, but we have a little bit of a problem, see. A lot of the ferries that would cut up the time to at least get you to South Zealous, or at least towards the shores past the, past the canal itself, are under siege by all sorts of manners of beasts and also pirates. And unfortunately, due to this contagion, no one is leaving this place by boat. Uh, do you, Unless any... you were nobility. Doth anyone know what? I am the I... sovereign of my circle. That's like nobility to our people. From South Zealous. Oh. Well, doth anyone know what 
flaggeth them, pirateth, run, flies. <clears throat> he just like looks at his cup of coffee. <sighs> okay. As we said before, sir, there actually was a noble woman that came in here, and she assisted with the with the blood cell barnacle plague. Fair I'm enough. more than certain she has not left this place. She has not left the city. We kind of are keeping tabs on making sure if anyone, come, whoever comes in and whoever comes out. So, you will most likely be able to find her at the Rally Raft Inn and pub. Well, we'll make sure to stop by there, but uh, I guess my old question still stands. Does anybody know what flag those pirates are flying? Unfortunately, no. They are very scattered and they're all from the north. And a lot of them have actually taken to subterfuge within the ranks of the people. Oh. Friends of yours? No, but I heard stories. Want to roll history? Oh, boy. Fifteen? Fifteen. You don't know which... Uh, you don't know which uh, flag these pirates sail. However, there is a set of pirates that are actually very good at hiding uh, within the within the common folk and actually setting up a lot of ships to actually sail out to places they're not supposed to be and then ransack the place and then let them go on their merry way so long as no one, you know, tries to be funny or whatnot. Mm. Give us your stuff. No one dies. Sort of scenario. Saboteurs. I was about to say, yeah. Yeah, I heard a group of, uh, heard about a group of saboteurs. Very clean, very efficient. You do what they say, they don't kill you. But, damn, they gave us a hard time. And you don't want to head up to the Emerald Canal anyway, sir, because if you decide to actually go into the Emerald Canal, that is where the most pirate activity has been since the entire onrush has happened. So crossing the canal is dangerous, going up the canal is even worse you're more than likely going to run into pirates. You'd have to find someone who'd be crazy enough to actually drive you out past the ferry, uh, past the canal to get you to South Zealous. I appreciate the information, Constable. I'm sorry I can't be of more help to you, gentlemen. You've been a plenty of help. Well, as I've said, we'll take you over to the hospital, make sure you are clean. And we will send you on over to the cleanest part of the city where you can rest and, by God, get some sleep and food, sir. <laughs> and with that, they do so. They uh, take you over to a small sanctioned area where there's a, med there's a medical, there's medical tents, there's people, like, treating the infection. With the information you gave them, they have a little bit of, like, a headway to fight this thing. They can't cure it, but they know a way to at least stop it from spreading. Uh, they check you guys over. You're all pretty much clean from this. However, they don't know how to check you. <laughs> and they don't know how to check Valtara because every instrument they use breaks on her skin. Fear not. Just give me some moisture and allow me time to rest. I shall be fine. You, you, you say that. You could, you could just feel the salt air seep into you. The, the high amounts of sodium that's entering you is just the strangest <gasps> feeling ever. I don't like this. <laughs> I <clears throat> There is a seagull st sitting on top of your head pecking at your cap. Please, some fresh water. <laughs> that is all I desire. Roll a survival check. I'll assist him. That'll give you advantage if you wanted to take that. I'll go with the old roll of modified 20. Yeah, that'll do. Modified 20? Uh... You kind of like dictate to a bunch of people that the salt air is not really doing all that well for you. you f you're able to like seep out the salt as much as you can to the point where you actually watch as your cap starts bleeding this black goo out of your gills, and that's the salt being decompressed through your body. Please don't don't mind this. It's it's just it's just sodium from the air. It will not infect anyone who touches it. It's fine. Just. It's a little icky. Uh, one of the one of the nurses actually walks up to you. Um, sir, if it's moisture you require, I actually know of a way. She holds up her hand and she shows that she's creating a ball of water. I've actually been studying some magic on the side, and I might be able to assist you with that. Oh, this is this is fascinating. I'm just like kind of entertained by the by the orb of water before me. She kind of like presses it against where she believes your face is. Close enough. 
you feel like at that point your cap just like now it doesn't bleed so much as it now just pours out the sodium and you feel your entire butt like there's now probably a mound <laughs> up to your, yeah there's a mound up to your ankles huh been carrying that load for a while <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is this is, and you, the the water that has been replaced with the sea air is now complete and utter, like just pure water. That's that's much better. I feel like I've lost twenty pounds. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> All right, and with that, you guys are taken over to the clean sector of the city. There are a couple of stores that are still open to you at this point. So if you now now with your newfound money and uh, with your newfound money and. With the knowledge knowing that the ports might not be all open to you, so getting any information about that might not be the wise I not wise, but mm -hmm. not prevalent to your needs at this point. I'm going to say that these are the few stores that you have that are open before you head over to the Rally Raff Inn. You have Tanner's Living Wear. Uh let's see. Uh Yuli's Offensive Imports. Uh Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Oh man, I hope I didn't screw this up. Oh no, I didn't. It's right here. Sorry. It's all the it's all the stuff that you guys could possibly get from these places. Uh, do, 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 do. I want to know what I can get from Yuli's offensive imports. That sounds like. Do we got some books here with some untoward content? Oh, uh, here we go. It's called hentai. <laughs> <laughs> Blozert's Blozert's Mage Tools, and the first. Uh oh yeah 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 that's right and the first nat and the Vespa Bay first general sorry so I'll re I'll readjust what I just said here so I'm not bouncing over myself so general store weapon store magic store and clothing clothing, clothing store okay I am a monk so two of those. Uh, I, I don't know we'll see we'll see what kind of weapons they hold yeah so like I said Vespa Bay first general. Uh, Blows Blowzert's Mage Tools, Yully's Offensive Imports, and Tanner's Living Wear. Well, gentlemen. Well, he wanted to go to the uh, Offensive Imports, and I'm just going to follow the giant mushroom real quick. I'm curious to see what is there. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> All righty. So with that, you guys decide to head over to the store. It is currently like nine o'clock at night and the stores are probably gonna close in two hours. So you probably have this and maybe one other shop to go to if okay. you have, with, depending on what you guys do. I would go to the general store after this, but it's not like yeah. we can't split up for that. Yeah, fair enough. If you wanna split, then uh, I'll say you can have another, like another place you can pick. So three out of the four. Mm. Gotcha. But since you're all deciding to go over to the uh, offensive imports, you walk in, this entire place just looks like, you know how like meat is hung up in a butcher shop? Yes. That's all the weapons hanging from the ceiling right now in metal chains. And these are all displays, by the way. Above you is a ceiling of, of uh, a metal mesh. So if the weapons did fall, they weren't gonna fall on customers. So you're pretty much looking at it like it, it's like an, a ceiling pawn shop of all the weapons they have up there. All sorts of various colors and sizes, all different types of weapons. Some of them, uh, some of them look like they're very fine masterwork. Some of them look like they were just ransacked off of bodies or like someone like pawned it off to get some extra cash. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the shop, uh, behind the uh, counter is a small little goblin uh, kind of like dressed in a hooded garb and she has dangling on her ears like an earrings but the earrings are little knives that kind of like jut down she's lacing her fingers together how can I help you <laughs> I apologize <laughs> I apologize this is how my people communicate there, there is, this is no transference of disease you are perfectly clean you might feel some slight mushroom growth on your ears, but you will be fine. Persuasion. The fact that you can hear me should uh, help. Also, this is not a great roll. Uh, three. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was gonna, okay. What, what do you wanna say? I was gonna help. <laughs> no, go ahead. Trying to, try to assist me? <laughs> Pretty much, I was just gonna yeah. assist. Yeah, I uh, think you might want to in this case. Yeah. Assisting gives him advantage. Just gives me advantage, yeah, okay. 
manages to get one worse. So uh, three still, even with advantage. Also, I don't know whose dice this is. It's not mine. <laughs> but now I get now now I'm gonna not use it after getting a three and a two. She kind of just like falls from the stool she was standing on from behind the table. Ah! Ah! She's like trying to grab the mushrooms off her head and rip them off. Just just ask if she has anything nice that doesn't use metal as a weapon. Uh, do you have any uh, crude weaponry maybe made out of wood or stone? Uh, is that thing clean? Uh, yes, this is Chromagill. He is the sovereign of his people. He's new to these parts. Hello, I'm I trying to solve this sickness issue. I don't think she can hear you anymore, buddy. Nope, she ripped the mushrooms off. And he's just waving. Valtar is going to try a persuasion. With a nat 20. She completely diffuses the, the situation. World's most charismatic dinosaur. Fucking Barney rolls up. <laughs> <laughs> All he wants is a hug. It's okay, we got gold. <laughs> gold will buy your silence. <laughs> mm, yes, yes it will. <laughs> hmm, well. We have plenty of masterwork pieces of materials here. Plenty of staves and... All sorts of quarter staffs at the ready. A lot of or they're really ornate. So mm -hmm. like you're you're looking at pretty much like custom made masterwork. So you could find a weapon. You could find any simple weapon and any mar uh, martial weapon here. That's plus one. Okay. Uh, but she looks to the lot of you. She looks to the rest of you and just goes, "If you're not looking for anything that's particularly just made of simple wood, I do have some." Extra wares that have just been imported tonight before the ship uh, before the shipments were stopped. Hmm. Such as, she looks over at you. She's like she's like scanning you up and down. Hmm. I think I might have something that would suit you the best. Really? <laughs> the mushrooms get itchy. <laughs> she hmm. she kind of pulls on a chain, and you watch as you know uh you know what uh. In a clothing store where, like, the clothes kind of just like the dry go cleaner, on a, yeah, oh, like the dry, a dry cleaner, cleaner, the dry cleaner rack. Like, you watch as the weapons are now shifting and going with that. Fancy. Uh, a hatch opens up right in front of her from the ceiling and drops down a light blue katana. Interesting. What? Uh, what's uh, what's 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 this thing's story? Probably this thing is called this thing. Uh, well, the the weaponsmith who gave me this, it's called it the ghoul. The ghoul? Yes. Any uh, particular reason? When the blade strikes its opponent, it makes them paralyzed almost as much as a ghoul's feral touch. Interesting. This weapon, the ghoul, uh, ghoul will do the following. It is a katana, which is a martial weapon that is a 1d6 plus 1d4 minus 1. 1d6... Plus 1d4 the 1d4 minus one? minus one. Oh, okay. Uh, it has five charges. You re it regains 1d4 charges at dawn. When you hit a creature with this weapon, while it has its charges, you expend one charge. At the strike, the creature must succeed a DC 10 constitution saving throw or be paralyzed until the end of its next turn. Elves and undead creatures are immune to the paralyzation effects. Makes sense. Elves. Hmm. All right. I Never. have I have but one more thing that might be suitable for you, sir. You don't seem as agile as your friend here. What with the breastplate and all. Yep. <clears throat> Wait, he's kind of fiddle with the sword, see how it feels in his hand, if he's allowed. <laughs> uh, you're allowed to touch it. I mean, like, you look behind you. There are, there are rifles <laughs> aimed at you. On, like, on like, mountain. like sentries? Not, yeah. <laughs> there are sentries aimed at you just if you decide ready. to walk away. <laughs> Goblin engineering. I can catch you one can, of them. You, <laughs> she just looks at you. You're welcome to hold it, sir, and to admire it, but I'd advise walking out of, the, out of here with the weapon. Fair enough. I'm not going to lie, it suits you. Uh, you say that. I am not proficient in martial weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I am proficient in simple weapons, and 
but it does give you the power to maybe paralyze. It's true. I just wouldn't get my proficiency bonus with the rolls. So now, while you're mulling that over, she pulls the uh, she pulls the lever one more time. The weapon starts spinning in the rack. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. (laughs) She's clapping again because I'm excited about engineering. (laughs) If it doesn't come from a tree, I'll be impressed. The hatch (laughs) opens, and down from it is an obsidian morning star. Hmm. This one's called the Necro Star. It. Uh, <laughs> this one's called the Necro Star. Now, there's something about you that seems ill. Almost a sense that there's lingering emotions about you, sir. Is she talking about us? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> With this. Any of all, any of those who are vile spirits or that of of unlife will be struck down even harder by this. The Morning Star is a 1d8 piercing plus 1d4 necrotic martial weapon. This weapon has four charges. It regains 1d4 at midnight. Bless you. When you hit a <coughs> zoom tight. Sorry. It's all right. When you hit a creature with this weapon while it is charged, the charge is expended. One charge is expended, and if it strikes a creature that is keyword undead, treat damage as a critical. Ooh. May I hold it? Absolutely. You touch it, you feel the spirits in the back of your head actually feel like they're being pushed away, giving you a sense of clarity. They're still there, but their voices are not as loud. How much? She like what she pulls out an abacus and starts fiddling with it. She's just mulling time. She's just fucking pulling your leg. Mm. Necrostar will cost you at least six hundred. Done. Hmm. Didn't even have to haggle that one. Very well, the gold. <laughs> you just throw it at her. <laughs> she falls over. Finally, peace and quiet. <laughs> Wake's just fiddling with the sword over there. Uh, I don't know. Never really practiced with something like this. It's heavier than I'm used to. Uh, How much? She, like, sees your hesitance. I'm going to roll something for her. Roll an insight for my contesting. Insight? Sure thing. Insight is a 16. 16? All right. You can see that she's trying to mull over the idea of trying to at least sell you this thing. Uh, She plays around with the abacus, trying to write down to see how much of a profit she can make off this without having to take away too much money. Uh, She she then looks to you and goes, Well, the original price would have been 450, but for you, if you would like, I can offer you any one of my other masterwork pieces as a trade-off as well. I'm sorry. So, how, how much does that make? So, so it would be four fifty. You for four fifty, you would get this, and one and, additional and one masterwork piece. Oh, interesting. Of a simple weapon. Yeah, I mean, simple weapons are technically monk weapons. Yeah. Do, do, do. Allow me to ponder that over real quick, because I did not think about getting a. I also didn't even think about getting a weapon when we came in here, but now I'm <laughs> pondering on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now well, you're while you're uh, I, mean, I we, do have a question. We have a shitload of other places to check out, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. And I do have a quick question. So the Necro Star counts as masterwork? Yes. So it, it does give you the plus one for attack bonus? Yes. Okay. And it's 1d8 plus 1d4? Uh, 1d8 plus 1d4 necrotic. So unfortunately, that necrotic would heal enemies, but the other damage tr- is treated as critical as well. Mm-hmm. And if you think that sounds backwards, you're absolutely right, <laughs> because she's trying to sell you something. Yep. He's just sitting there, just <laughs> just f- just holding. He just walks around with the fucking necro star, just mm. like a kid with a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> Chromagill attempts to, to not freak uh, to not freak this goblin out. He kind of like scrapes a little, just a bit of spores off of his like sleight of hand. Off, of, okay. Uh, Fifteen. 
Just tries to get a little, like scrape a little bit her direction to see if he can yeah, get her a, to like listen a, to you him. Watch, just like a tiny little mushroom just pops on the top of her hair. <laughs> tries his best to not shout in psychic. E excuse me. Pardon. She looks up, looking to the back to see if anyone else like I went in. Point with she, the necro she, starts. No, she she then turns to look at Valtara. No, no, other the the mushroom man. I, Chromagill. Hello. Uh, very well. I guess I can hear you now. Fear, fear, with that shitty roll, she ain't fighting it. Fear not. I just want to know. Uh, you seem to have a uh, plenty of fine pieces. Would you have any sort of great clubs? Again, with no metal. <laughs> Such a fascinating device. Uh, what pops down is a uh, a club, probably about the size of your forearm, that cur that has a curve and then turns into a flat top. It has two metal brands on the bottom of it, but that's just for the holster. So that's not going to be... Fuck, that's okay. not gonna, like, I'll, that's not I'll gonna trust the DM on this one. Yeah. You're not going to hand this to me later and be like, ha ha, wardens can't use stuff with metal. No, <laughs> you're you, like, you, it's small enough that it's like, oh, there's a little bit of metal on it. However, like, you could just grab the wood. And, okay. And also, you feel like with enough tinkering, you could just scrape <laughs> just it off. Pull those off. Yeah, pull it off. It's not going to fuck over the Your entire thing. Your fancy knobs don't do nothing for this mushroom. Yeah, so it's a giant club with a little bit of a flat top, and it's made of pure elm. This is this is quite exquisite. How much would you want for such a piece? For a masterwork, it's going to cost you 140. Looks it over, swings it around a little bit, barely missing Morgan, but you know, it's... roll a dexterity uh, saving throw. I'm going to do that for Valtara too, because she's fucking huge, dude. Eight. She is fucking huge. You're gonna you're gonna whack her. Oh no! Roll, roll up. Roll I don't want to hit her. Roll an acrobatics check. <laughs> Me? Athletics, actually. I apologize. Okay. Uh, 11. Valtara passes by one. Whee! It's right over her head. What did you get? I rolled an eight. Do I need to roll something? Quick! Ow! Go ahead. All right. Dex save. Oh, dex saving throw. As I'm fiddling and like looking at the weapons <laughs> yeah. rack. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I barely even paid any mind. Just whoosh! <laughs> as a 26. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Hmm. I'm, no, I'm, so, I'm looking at a hand so what, axe no, right so now. what happens is he's looking, he's just holding the necro star, just. <laughs> Sorry about that. Still getting used to this. <laughs> it never ends. A <laughs> hundred and forty gold, you say? I'll take it. All right. She'll take the gold from you. Hands of the gold. Uh, since it is a masterwork item, it does not have a name. She tells you that it is up to you to decide what that name is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. And you said it's made of elm? Yep. All right. I'm, I'm going to... I've never had to to name a tool before. You'll have to... You'll have to give me time. I, I wish to use it before I name it. I, I want to christen it upon its first mission. How Whatever. much damage did you say, Gould? Oh, sorry. Whatever, man. It's your tool now. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, Ghoul does 1d6 slashing plus 1d4 minus 1. 1d6 plus 1. And it is masterwork, so you get a plus 1. On attack bonus. So just uh, get rid of that minus oh, 1. Oh, just on the attack bonus, not yeah, on yeah, the yeah, attack yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, no, the attack roll is 1d6 slashing plus 1d4 minus 1. Plus. Is it? Yeah, you roll, you roll a 1d4 one. and yeah. then take away 1. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, Wake basically like ducks that. Whoosh. And is uh, messing with like kind of a hatchet, like a hand axe right now. All right, you got yourself a deal. I'll take one of these. All right, four fifty. So you get <laughs> you get ghoul, and you may also obtain one simple weapon of your choice. That's masterwork. Yep, hand axe. Hand axe. The, the yes. There you go. There we go. Bada bing. Tell All your right. tell your friends. If any, uh, if only we were able to actually have these shipments come in. I was supposed to get something even grander. Apparently someone had the blessed, had a had a great sword with the blessing of Kelpie on it. Huh. And unfortunately that was lost at sea due to the fact that they were held up at the, at the canal. Well, I'm sure the sword feels at home then. Mm. All right, well, be off with you. I, I, if you have no more other business, Val um, kind of just like, did, did, as you guys yeah, leave. Yeah, I point at Val. Did, did you want? She's going to switch out her whip for a masterwork. 
a master whip. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, she gets a red whip with a metal chain at the end of it, and at the very tip of it actually looks like a piece of uh, a re- not a refined, but it almost looks like it's semi-refined piece of ore. Hmm. That is nice. very sturdily put against the metal piece, so it's not like if she whips it once, the metal piece will just the the rock will just like fall off. Yeah. yeah so she double checks that she'll spend the money on that. I'll mark that off for her. So she gets a masterwork whip. All right. And with that, you guys actually bought all the special items that you could have gotten from the store. Ooh. Wake's playing with his cool blue sword. I don't know how to use it, but I'm going to learn. <laughs> uh, Ghoul, is, Ghoul is a katana that is light blue on the edge. It gives off a really faint glow. Ooh. And the very bottom of the tip of the blade is serrated to almost look like a ma- the maw of a ghoul. Somebody put a lot of effort into this one. Yeah, well, they sure did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, you guys walk out of Yoli's Offensive Imports. Where would you like to go next? Uh, I wanted to buy some healing potions at, like, the general store, but that's, like, the only other thing I could think of if anybody else wanted to do anything else. Uh, there is still... Uh, there is still... <coughs> the uh, Tanner's Living Wear and uh, Blozert's Mage Tools. Chromagill is just swinging around his club. I found everything I was looking for! I am not wanting for clothes. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> uh, he seems un... Are, are you, uh... I haven't seen you smile ever. This is just weird. I haven't had peace and quiet in two years. I'm gonna roll for Valtara. I'd almost say the same thing. Valtara is going to decide to go to Blozart's Mage Tools. <laughs> Just, just walks away <laughs> as we're walking out. Well, you no, guys she, don't. She, <laughs> she, she tells you. She tells you she's going to go to the magic shop. Guys, I would not blame her for going. not. <laughs> mm. I, just, huh. I just wave as she leaves. No, well, well. no she, she pretty much tells you that she'll meet you, at, uh, she'll meet you at the pub. She just wants to check out the magic store. Sounds good. And she walks off. So what are you guys now going to do? You want to go to the general store, but yeah. But yeah. Follow us along to the general store. All right. You guys head over towards the Vesa Bay First General. Uh, there is a line of people in bundles and rags, just like sitting there waiting to get s- to waiting in line. There is a twelve-person wait limit, uh, wait line for you guys to get inside the general store. Seems quite popular tonight. Yeah, happening place. Uh, I asked the person in front of us. So. Uh... What's the deal around here? Why is this uh, so popular here? He turns around. It's a it's a little old man with a giant wart on the side of his nose and looks up at you. Try not to look. Try not to look. Try not to look. Try not to look. He kind of like opens his mouth and smiles. He's missing like three teeth at the top of his of the top of his uh, jaw. Maintain eye contact. Thank <laughs> God I don't have rapport sports with this guy. <laughs> And he's got he's got one mutton chop and one half cut. Giving Chromagill way too much to work with. Coming up with a name. Well, Shuddy, it's about working time's over. It's time for the sailors to get themselves a little peppy up. <laughs> yup, that sounds about right. No, this all makes sense now. Hi. What is this creature? Is it some sort of fairy goblin? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, wor- don't worry, Shuddy. I'm sure there's a bunch of bristle bean around for everyone. <laughs> oh, boy, good old, good old bristle bean. <laughs> yeah. A gentleman walks out with a pile, uh, with a uh, file of what looks like a dark roast coffee. We're at a fucking Starbucks. God damn it. A Starbucks joke. reserve. <laughs> oh, oh. And with that one person leaving out, you start going in slowly but surely. No, oh, there we go. See, line's moving. Well, I also got to pick me up a bit of fishing tools, you see. We've been catching a lot of yeths, and they don't like it when you catch their young. You've been catching yeths? Yeths. Oh. I, I, I think I caught one. Of, have, was that the same fish that I caught uh, back when we were fighting the uh, goblin uh, tentacled sarlacc thing? No. Okay. Different fish. 
Uh, that was a. Uh, are you talking about? I'm not talking about bloaterfish, yeah. No, no, I'm not talking about bloaterfish. I was talking about that mirrored one that we. Uh, that oh I yeah, got. no, that's not what we're okay. talking about. You don't want to catch their young, Sonny, because then they come back and everyone here just gets to evoke their eye, and there's far too much eye going around for these poor people here. Yeah, Luckily, I'm... none of us are sick, but half the town's been quarantined. I'll, I'll just try to keep my fishing away from here then, knowing that they're in the area. Mm, you best, stranger, and poor you. You look like you need to bathe in water. I really do. I'm really hoping the inn has a... Uh accommodations for my kind. Oh, I'm sure they will, son. I'm sure they will. Just don't get yourself stuck in the water. Maybe even the Ith will come after you. <laughs> <laughs> don't joke about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I... sorry, son. Stroke a nerve. How dare he? <laughs> he looks so... <laughs> He's still holding the fucking morning star. Hey, Morgan. You're not here. You don't exist. <laughs> don't exist. As long as I hold this, you won't bother me. <laughs> Piece of quad, damn it. Your arm's getting tired. Uh, <laughs> Roll an athletics check. No. <laughs> to keep holding your weapon. Bad athletics. Oh, that's a four. You drop it on your foot. Uh, Pong. <laughs> You okay, Morgan? Hey, Morgan, you dropped it. Hey, Morgan, you dropped your weapon. <laughs> Morgan, you dropped your weapon. Hey, Morgan. Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Young Freddy, hey, you Morgan. dropped your weapon. Hey, Morgan, hey, you Morgan. dropped your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go for something. I look for the just nearest crook, hat. I just, just look for stand. the nearest hat. Uh, the old man's wearing a fisherman's hat. <laughs> I'm fine. Hmm, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> This one is fun. Just kind of sprinkles a little bit of spores on him. Doesn't Slide do the full sneeze. I like I like this system. I can either sneeze just to get it out of the way, or try to slide of hand it on him if I think no, it's gonna I mean, offend. Just, 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 <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you fucking blowing cash, like. Psh, psh, psh. Like that. You're like that salt guy meme. Oh. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba, Seventeen with a sleight of hand. This dude seems toasted. There's no way he noticed. Come on. <laughs> this guy get a nat 20. A vigilant old man. <laughs> I saw that. Slaps your hand away. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone in line knows. <laughs> Do not be afraid. This is not a contagion. I am not infected, and this is not a spread of the of, of the disease you've been fearing. I ap I apologize for any inconvenience my spores may have created. Oh, the yith's talking to us! I just wanted coffee! Everyone disperses. Hey. Oh, hey, look. It's not as busy anymore. <laughs> yeah, I guess they all didn't need it. Thank you! Starts walking towards the store. <laughs> nope, Vince. You, you, start walking, you start walking into the store. There's the old man still there. I'm getting my bristle bean, damn it. By all <laughs> means! Go ahead. <laughs> These people are interesting. Nothing like my circle. Yeah, you walk inside. You're in the general store. There's a bunch of things you can get here. Like all your basic, like all your basic adventuring needs are in here. Uh, there's plenty of food, plenty of water. This place looks pretty fine, considering the fact that this whole entire town has a uh, epidemic going around. This place is very well put together. It's very, uh, its upkeep is very, is very nice. Its produce is very clean and very uh, crisp. You're looking at all of it. All their fruits and vegetables are super fresh. These fruits and vegetables are very happy. You treat them quite well. Uh, all of you get this very, very fruity aroma into your nose. And it all of a sudden, just like you feel your entire insides just jolt up with a, with just this swiftness of energy just by being around it. Ha. Ah. Ah. <sighs> Reminds me of the forest. Uh, the old man kind of like hobbles over. There is a Goliath woman sitting behind the counter. Uh, hello, hello, Barney. Is, uh, you want another cup for today? That's right. I just get me a big old one. Here's a good old silver coin. <laughs> She like pours, she pours in a cup of coffee for him in a little glass jar. Cause when she pours it, it looks like molten lava and then it turns into coffee as it enters the file. 
It's gonna be a very hard to hold glass jar. She hands it to him. He picks it up. <laughs> and he just jigs his way out. I'm sure this man has calloused over his fingers from so many hot beverages that he just no longer feels the heat. My skin's immortal. <laughs> or that. That too. Both maybe. Could be. May anything. I help you, gentlemen? Uh, yeah, I'm looking to uh, restock on some healing potions. They, uh, the road's been rough. Uh, you've entered in here from right then, I assume? Yeah. We have very little left. There's been a couple of folk from right who have kind of taken our last bit of supplies that we can readily give out. The rest we're going to have to keep on reserve for those who are affected by the barnacles. Understandable. Let me see how much we have left for you. She kind of, like, goes behind the counter. She looks through a couple of crates. She has... Dice be in your favor. Hey, not bad. She has... Five, six, seven. She has eight minor healing potions available for purchase. And... Two moderate healing potions available. I'm... Uh, uh, what are the difference between the minor and the moderate again? Minor is 2d4 plus 4. Okay, so... Uh, moderate is 4d4 plus 6, I believe. Okay. Uh, the, how much for uh, just a minor healing potion? One of those... Miners that, uh, are going to cost you 50 apiece. All right. I'm they would be cheaper, to... but due to the epidemic, they kind of have to have inflation. No, I get it. Supply and demand. Boy, howdy, is there one? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to buy six of them. Okay, she gladly does so, and you pay her off the money? Yes. Excellent. So she has that. Uh, how I do much for the moderate healing potions? Moderates are going to be one. So, uh, 100. so 100, so yeah. 50 and 100, I guess. Pencils would work better, yes. Uh, I'm, going to use, I'm going to buy one minor and one moderate. Okay. Morgan, do you have any more money? I have five gold, but I don't care. <laughs> Oh, your your friend's kind of smiling and holding that. I'm smartly me. holding it as it's hilt on my hilt. Just okay. I thought you were still fucking no, red, no, no, red no. ballooning it. No, I learned. <laughs> <laughs> I just, mm, mm, mm. His morning star gives him a rare peace of mind. He is not threatening you in any way. I hope I assure you. Hi. <laughs> so this place seems like pretty. Holds up a pistol. Hi to yourself. <laughs> So, this place seemed pretty popular. Uh, here, these bristle beans are all the rage in these parts. Oh, you're from out of town. That's correct. You have no idea. That's actually one of our more famous brews here. Uh, we used to have an apothecary open, but unfortunately, my husband has been stricken with the barnacles as well. He used to run the store. However, I do know the recipe to actually make it into a little bit more of a condensed form. So, while we can't have the full potency of the medicine, we can... Brew it into coffee. At least keeps the sailors or anyone who wants to work uh, pepped up a little bit for at least a good half of the day. That's awesome. Uh, actually, I might have something that might be of interest to you then. I pull out one of the vials of medicine that I took from the initial batch, and I set it down. Uh, maybe this will be able to help your husband. It's a piece of the medicine that we found uh, on the road on our way in. Oh, you don't say. Well, thank you so much. I'll I'll take this. To the How much do I owe you for it, then? How many of those pots of whatever would you think that's worth. Oh, I'd gladly give you at least six vials of it. Yeah, that works for me. Yep, so you just traded off, like, the medicine for six vials of bristle bean coffee. Allow me to explain. Bristle bean coffee, a drink that applies the effects of a short rest, but if the consumer does not take a long rest within six hours of consumption, they will gain a point of exhaustion. Mm. Ooh. Insta short rest. Mm hmm. Insta one short rest die. <clears throat> when you were reading that off, I really hope we could get like a black and white filter over you for the archive. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> bristle bean coffee brings a black man. <laughs> bristle bean coffee, put some pep in your step. What, what? There you go. Anyone else? Fellas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the fucking uh, Wilkins oh, coffee commercial. Coffee. I don't want it. <laughs> All right, let me have it. <laughs> oh, thank you kindly. 
And uh, that's all I can spare, at least. This does have a finite supply as well, and I'd like to at least make some kind of a profit. No problem. Yeah, you uh, take care of anybody else. Is there anything else you gentlemen would need? I mean, we have plenty of materials. uh, Well, you're all adventurers, are you not? I have plenty of materials that could be of use to you. We have some new bedrolls. We have some rations. We have, oh, well, uh, I guess I, it would help if I knew the nature of what your next adventure would be. Uh, we're heading up towards the canal. Is there a way I could get maybe about 100 feet of rope and a grappling hook? We can do that. But I also, uh, I have something else. We have bedrolls that are actually made from wax weld. What's wax weld? Wax weld is leather that allows the user to have advantage checks on uh, uh, advantage checks on any skill check that deals with liquid so long as they wear it. So it's pretty much a waterproof bed. A water resistant. Okay. Oh, hydrophobic. Hydrophobic bed, yeah. Hmm. It's so scared of water. I mean, Tanner, the fellow who lives up, up the road and works at the uh, armorer shop, makes all kinds of stuff for the fishermen here made out of wax weld. Hmm. I personally love the water. I wouldn't want to repel it. Same. <laughs> Both look at Morgan. How much? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the bedroll will at least cost you 20. Looking at my pitiful five gold. Chromagill. A pittance! What's a pittance? <laughs> I just know that's a response to prices. Well, like she's telling you, she can give you like material. So like if God forbid you had to like grab something out of water or any liquid. It's not just water, by the way. Uh, I should have explained that better. It's uh it's waterproof to any liquid. So just liquids. Just Here. liquid in liquid in general, it's just completely hydrophobe uh hydrophobic. Try and piss on me, nature. Can't get me now, lava. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. It could work that way. Zip it up and throw it in a volcano. <laughs> I'm nice and snug. <laughs> warm down here. Warm. I was a little warm, but I'll live. Uh, so, wait, Wake will front Morgan the money for the sleeping bag uh, uh, while paying for the uh, 100 foot of rope and grappling hook. All right, so you have a wax weld bedroll. How much for the rope and hook? Rope and hook. Uh, that will probably float you 30. Okay, so 50 total. Yeah. Uh, with that, you guys, uh, if there's anything else you want to buy in here? Nope, nothing for me. That's it for Wake as well. All right. Well, she thanks you, she thanks you for giving her the medicine. She'll use her husband's tool set later tonight to get some compounds and maybe even find something to at least help him out with that. She actually does look to you and goes, you know, it's funny. Are You are all from right, yeah? Yeah. Are you here with that uh, feline woman who came from right just a few hours ago? Uh, noble woman? Yes. Uh, no, we're told that we should look for her, though. Hmm. Well, she most likely is staying at the inn. That's where most of the adventurers from Wright are set to stay from while the quarantine's in effect. Yeah, I think we're on our way there now. Excellent. Well, happy trails to you all, and don't get sick. Yeah, take care of your husband. I will. Thank you so much. She shuts the door, and the place closes behind you. There's the old man drinking his coffee. <laughs> you have a good night, just Barney. Jig- yeah, Barney. Thank you! As he like, kind of just like starts jigging his way down the street. He's got, drinking that way too late. It's going to keep him up all night. Man's got a song in his heart. Just let him sing it. McGuckin, McGuckin, McGuckin. It's the simple things in life. Uh, with that much time that you had passed, because of you actually cutting the line, it actually opened up enough time for you guys to go to one more shot. Oh, man. So you have Tanner's Living Wear, or you have uh, Blozert's Mage Tools. Well, I chose one. He chose one. Five gold. <laughs> What, what do you want to get? Still your call. What do you want to get? Clothes or magic? What's more interesting to you, Morgan? Wait, didn't Voltaire already go to the magic shop? Yeah, she yeah, she branched off. So I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> so go to the clothing store and just see what's there. Then I guess. Okay. Uh, you head inside. Uh, you walk down the street. 
you're actually right near the uh, the pub that you're supposed to be going to. So it's literally just like two stores down. Uh, you head inside into Tanner's Living Wear, which is the name of the store. Uh, you are greeted by a cloaker hanging from the ceiling looking at you. Hey. It opens up its wingspan. And it has little banners that fly out. Welcome to Tanner's. This is a fun way to welcome patrons. It okay. refolds its arms back up and kind of just like not knows for raw to its way up into the ceiling. Though a tad thank, unnerving. Thank you. Uh, coming out is a small deep gnome uh, gentleman, kind of like rubbing his mustache. Ah, gentlemen, coming in, coming in late, I see. How can I help you? So you're a fan of mimics as well. Mimics? Oh, that, yes. Well, uh, it's kind of hard to stay away from home from the Underdark, you see. And uh, my favorite pet here, I, I couldn't just leave him back at home. Yeah, I know how you feel. So what can I do for you? Well, uh, we're just... We're new to the area. Thought we'd stop by. Mm, right, fellas? Correct. <laughs> mm, I see your gag, son. There's a knee slapper. I got, I got a good on those lizard boys that came in before. There's layers, Morgan. It was comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on in. I'm sure I can give you something interesting. We have a few pieces that came in just before the port closed. Uh, I could show those off to you for the special price. And, uh, oh, oh, ho hold on one moment. Blight! I Blight. Guessing the cloaker descends from the ceiling. Yep, the cloaker, like, just kind of, again, Nosferatu its way down. Blast it all! Did you eat the key again? Give it to me, we have customers! Blah! Get out of here. You'll have dinner soon. My mimic makes keys for fingers. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan. Yeah, <laughs> girl, just look at him. We all just sort of look at him at that one. <laughs> <laughs> so he takes you over to his wardrobe and shows it off to you. You pretty much have the standard affair stuff you have here. Uh, a lot of the leather clothing that he has for sale actually has a little bit of uh, extra fine tunements to them. And he actually does make them all in wax weld as well. So there is a suit of wax weld leather armor that he has uh, for you guys. Uh, the extra benefit of having it being a suit of leather armor is that water completely deflects, water or any liquid completely deflects off you. Uh, waist high water is not considered difficult terrain. Wait, can't wear armor. So, uh, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> there is goat. also, uh, there is also a Waxwell chain shirt, which is on sale for a special price. However, there is something that is quite particularly interesting to you, Wake, because you notice a familiar symbol of Kelpie on a pair of gauntlets that's hanging from the side. Hello, what are we? Ah, yes, uh, we got these in before. Uh, there was a, apparently a shipment that was supposed to come in, having a blessed suit of armor straight from Kelpie's clerics herself. But unfortunately, that ship fell down, and through a little bit of uh, asking and ne'er do welling of my own, my own sake, I was able to actually get the gauntlets, not the whole piece. Right there, son, is choir coral gauntlets. Hmm. I heard they lost a great sword as well. Oh, is that the other piece they were talking about? Hmm, what interesting. I, what I get. Uh, oh, what'd you get? I said, from what I get. Yeah, well, he is not in the business of uh, of, of weapons. He's more in the business of clothing. Have you tried this, the goblin maid? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, she's who I heard it from. Sorry, just making small talk. Oh, really? So yeah. That's astounding. She normally is quite competitive and tries to... Steal as many customers from me as possible. That's weird. You seem to deal in different things. Mm, I used to know... Well, we, we were childhood friends, and this was quite the common affair. Though I'm... I guess age and time has changed her for the better, I suppose. Yeah, maybe. Well, in any case, son, unfortunately I have no idea what these do. But I do know that they do have the blessings of Kelpie upon them. He shows you the, ingra the uh, insignias on them. It's a seahorse. It's literally the symbol of Kelpie. Checks out. Uh, they are they are metal gauntlets. He does not know what they do. 
Gauntlets that have uh, that have yet to be identified and can only be attuned that and can only be identified if they are attuned to the user wearing them. The only thing about them that they have is the symbol of Kelpie. You want to roll those dice, Wake? I mean, they're one of the very few types of gear that I can wear outside of boots, rings, and I guess medallions. <laughs> While you think about that, Chroma Gill points at the leather suit of armor and uh, blows a little bit of spores. Not not a sleight of hand. He's not hiding it, but he's not going to make a sneeze. Just tries to do a little, <laughs> like just right in, right in this dude's face. Blow a little kiss at him. Hello, I was curious. How much do you charge for this suit of armor? Why did you blow? Why did you have to blow the spores at me, son? I know what you are. Oh. Well, I apologize. Uh, many, many people in this town have been very, very terrified. Every oh, time we, I have un we have uh, under we have uh, underdark versions of your folk called the Fungals. Oh, I've never met my underdark cousins, but I hope they've treated you well and haven't given you a bad impression of me. Mm, I know how to kill them. Well, that's knowledge you can keep. <laughs> what would what would you like for this suit of leather armor? Oh, this suit. Oh, it would probably cost you about 60, but the unfortunate thing would be we'd have to fit you. Looks at the suit of armor, looks at the armor vest he kind of has. Would that cost extra? No, 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 it would just cost a little bit of time. Rummages through his many, many folds and gathers 60 gold. Now, sir, would you uh, mind if we uh, altered you? Al altered me? Yes, one one moment. Blight! <laughs> the creature envelops you in its wingspan. Oh boy, I don't know if this is scary or fun. I think we'd still be able to hear him normally. Oh yeah, I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> it would be a psychic connection. Yeah. I'm doing this for your benefit. <laughs> uh, you all hear like this weird unzipping, and then. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Now, before anyone gets any funny <laughs> ideas... I'm a fucking mushroom. <laughs> anyway, go on. The unzipping is actually like the little yellow tape. It's measuring Stop. tape. <laughs> the the creature lets go of you, and it actually you're actually wearing a temporary piece of leather that kind of like envelops you to show the size of you. This is fantastic! And the, uh, the gnome kind of just, like, wanders up to you and starts <laughs> writing down notes and, like, using his pencil to measure you, like how an artist normally does when they, like, try to get reference point for perspective. Is this how you people get clothing normally? I found this one on a mannequin. No. Mm. We'd have to, <laughs> well, we'd have to cut this seam, and, uh, he kind of, like, takes his finger and pokes you in the stomach to see how, like, malleable your flesh is. <laughs> like, squishes a little, but, like, you know, it's... <laughs> Still sturdy, though. Hmm. Well, you're not as frail as your fungal cousins. <laughs> just the little indent of the finger just kind of pops out <laughs> after a second. Uh, with another, like, probably 15, 30 minutes, he can cut the vest open to fit you. But before he can do that, he's going to ask for the price for 60 bucks. He gives you the 60 gold, as I said, gathered from various folds in his body. All right, so... Uh, he tried, uh, would you have it be preference that the armor would look exactly the same way as your previous one did? Uh, what's this one look like? Like, give me, give me a Uh, this one, this when you feel rocking. it, it almost feels like wax paper. Okay. But there is a solid, to, there is a solid weight to it. It's just that the surface layer of it, just like when you feel, when you press your finger against it, it like kind of stubs and stops. And like, it takes a little bit for you to kind of like mesh your finger up alongside of it. Okay. When you release textured. it. Yeah, when you release it, it has like a little bit of like a Vaseline like feeling, like a little bit of film on your finger. I was gonna say there's a film on it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a film on it, and then like when you go back to rub the same spot, that film returns. It almost okay. feels like the the leather that is producing it has enough like of the of the whatever the creature was made out of, it's producing it on the spot. Okay. Um, as as far as looks, it'll probably look pretty similar. I'll, uh, it can have some. If it's got shouldery bits, though, like if there were, there was more covering his shoulders. You're going, yeah. I'll for allow the, that. For this I still one, want his arms exposed. Yeah, he could probably give you like a little bit of a flap that covers the side of it. Because right. again, this thing is supposed to be waterproof. Oh yeah, that's right. Actually, so yeah, the more of it that's covering me, probably the better. I'm guessing with its right stuff. So he can, he'll offer you this for an extra ten. He can have it go down the side of your arms, but it also can be detachable. Ooh. 
Yes, I, I, I like that customizable feature. That way I can, I can brandish these guns whenever need be. Get him that Chippendale shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he'll, he'll add on to that. Uh, so as I said, the wax weld leather armor, armor that deflects water off the user, waist high water is not considered difficult terrain, the user has advantage on any skill check that deals with liquid. Okay, let me write all that down. Liquid. All right. Cool. Uh, while he's tailoring, uh, Chromagill Wake would have asked, uh, so how much are these if I were to... Uh... Well, I really don't know, apart from the fact that it's just basic metal, and it's got little bits of holy symbols, and I'm not a real clerical man, so I'd probably sell you at the face value of at least 100 piece. 100 a piece? Not a piece, 100 okay. pieces. So 100 bucks for the for the set. You got yourself a deal. All right. So you would have to wear them and then attune them for an entire day to figure out what the effects would be. All right. Wake throws on these metal gauntlets for flavor. Can I say they're fingerless? Yeah, sure. Why yeah. Not? <laughs> hey, Kelpie. Clank, clank. Now I'm going to punch just the same amount, but it'll feel like I'm punching harder. Oh, uh, you didn't... Didn't the, didn't the goblin maid tell you anything about brass knuckles? She had a couple of those. Oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I think my hands are stronger than that. <laughs> well, all right then, boys. If there's not nothing else you want, I suggest it's about I'm going to head over to the pub and probably get to closing time. Well, we'll join you then. All right, and that's where we'll take a break here. Works for me. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the table. All right, so we're all geared up. I got some new gloves. Uh, you got a new club. You got a morning star of silence, and I have a katana that I should not rightfully be able to use. Well, Ads. I can. I'm just not very good with it. All right. You can swing it all you want. You just, you know, might not hit nothing. Yeah, just might not swing it with the grace and finesse of your other weapons. Funny thing, going in there, like the only thing I was thinking about potentially getting at a weapon store was a slashing weapon because the only thing I don't have. <laughs> and now I have. Get every damage type. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, at this point, you guys uh, leave the store. It is now nine o'clock at night. Uh, the pub pub's lights are blaring it is a three-story building uh it is a pub and tavern so right now the most rowdy part of section of the place is the tavern so the first floor it has is just to burst with people uh talking to each other a lot of yelling a lot of just folks gabbing about their day trying to wash away all the bullshit of the day uh there's a band playing. There's a couple of dudes on some lutes, a guy on the piano, and uh, a guy on some drums, and a bard also like singing as well. So there, that you have a little bit of entertainment while the mood is set for this dimly lit little place. Uh, as you enter in, uh, you're pretty much bobbing and weaving away from all the common folk. Uh, there's not a lot of people here that look far too interesting, apart from like all the fishermen and sailors and everything. So if you're looking for a noble, they're going to be very, very easy to spot out of everyone here. Uh, Wake, roll me a perception check. All right, Wake's looking for a noble. Also, I just realized I have so many weapons, I probably look like fucking Gilgamesh right now. Uh, perception check is a... <coughs> plus three. 17. 17? Uh, you don't see a noble, but you see a very rotund alligator sitting in the far back with two other gentlemen. Uh, hey, guys, uh, look around for the, uh... Actually, no, come on, I gotta introduce you to somebody. Friend of mine. Okay. Uh, you two. Uh, Valtar is also there, too. She's sitting at the bar, so you can't miss her, either. She's fucking quadruple the size of any other normal person in this entire fucking place. Except potentially Onslow Green. <laughs> the grandest gator. <laughs> No, actually, Onslow is shorter than her by two feet. Oh, boy. Uh, so you two are taken uh, off to the side. You are being led to what looks like a very large, rotund alligator in suspenders. Uh, lizard folk. 
Uh, next to him is another lizard folk who is a Komodo dragon. Uh, like his saliva is kind of dripping a little bit off to the side. Uh, they all kind of look like they're they were dressed up for some kind of fight, and they're all banged up. But they're all they all seem to be pretty smiles about the whole situation. And across the table from that is a red scale dragonborn who looks like he's in some sort of plate mail, but he also has a camera draped around his neck. Onslow, relieve. They turn around and look to you. Onslow kind of just like stands up. Now, son, don't get in here saying our names. Get in here for a hug. Wake goes in for that hug. Yep. Wake, look out. You're about to be consumed by that strong-jawed creature. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> he, like, picks you up and just, like, gets you in for a hug. You feel your back crack. Oh, that felt good. Puts you down. Relieve kind of just, like, stands up and holds his hand out to shake. I shake Relieve's hand. Yep. So does, uh, so does uh, Kowalski as he gets up to shake your hand as well. I don't believe we've been. I, did, I don't. You know who he is. He you He was introduced. That's right. That's right. I, I couldn't remember <laughs> if it was Dagon or Wake that met Kowalski. No, Dagon didn't meet Kowalski. I mean, Dagon probably did, but <laughs> but he doesn't still, give. He wouldn't give a shit. At some point. Yeah. Hey, good seeing you. How have you been? Doing all right. We just got off a mission. So what brings you all here? Well, what brings you here? I figured you were still at that missionary of yours. I was, and then everything hit the fan, and. When is it not hitting the fan? This whole place is hitting the fan. We're lucky enough we're inside a clean area. Well, I just meant in particular, you know, the, uh, out <laughs> there. Oh, the bigger, the the bigger picture yeah, stuff, the, eh? Yeah, the significantly bigger fan. Well, if you're out here, that must mean you got some kind of job, and he turned, like, the, the fucking dragonborn turn and looks to you. Oh, yeah, forgive me. These are, uh, these are my two new companions. Uh, I'd like to introduce Morgan Strong. And this is Chromagill. He's the sovereign of his people. He's going to sneeze real quick, and you are going to... Does a little scrape oh. from the top of his cap, trying to keep it in a pretty close area. You just watch this Onslow kind of just, like, takes his mug of beer and holds it to the <laughs> side, covering it. I don't want to sneeze. There seems to be a lot of people here, and there's been a lot of jumpy people with, uh, with, with, the, it, with the barnacles going about, so I'll try to be as discreet as possible. Hello! My name is Chromagill! extends a hand towards Onslow and the group. It sounds louder than it is. Boy, you're telling me. Takes your hand and kind of just shakes it. You actually feel your entire body. Like, he's smaller than you, but the moment he grabs your hand, you feel your entire body shake up <laughs> when he shakes your hand. I'm going to call you Strongjaw. <laughs> I like that, son. Extends a hand to Relieve. Yeah, Relieve kind of just like looks at you. Yes. Hello to you. Like his tongue like flicks out. Hello, Drippy Drool. You are very nice. He, he looks over to Onslow and starts talking in Draconic. And then you see, you see like Onslow like smirk and, and Kowalski just go. They're all hissing to each other in Draconic. Extends a hand to Kowalski. This happened a lot on our old crew. Uh, <laughs> everybody would just start speaking different languages. I see. At least they can all understand me. Hello, little one. <laughs> like Kowalski just like is taken aback by that, and he just goes, "All right, hold on a second. <sighs> Hello. I apologize. You're smaller than this group, and my people d d name things off of descriptions. No, uh, I, I guess that makes sense. It's all right. So yeah, no, they they all shake your hand as well. Yep. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> So how'd your hunt go out here? Pretty well, son. I, I know that I'm no stranger to telling you where I go off on my hunts. I even tried to ask if your little turtle friend would allow me to let you go outside and play. Yeah, my, uh, my training took a lot of doing. It's, uh, after all that's happened, I'm surprised I'm even this along as I am. But, well, son, you know. this, this whole world's full of surprises. For instance, he pulls his fucking leg up on the table. It is mangled to shit. You might want to get that looked at. Story, I'm guessing. Funny story. See, now you would think that this is because of the displacer beast. Nah, this is from because of them. He, like, opens up a flap on the side of his arm, and there's a giant gash that reveals bone. You might want to get that looked at, too. 
Now, son, this uh -huh. got my leg stuck in the wagon wheel on the way downhill. That is a funny story. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yeah, uh, Relieve is like chuckling a little bit, and Kowalski's just sitting there, just like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we. Ran I have pictures to prove it. <laughs> we ran into a couple of them as well. You, they they all turn and look to each other. You what? I pull out one of the Displacer Beast tentacles. Seems there were a couple left behind. Kowalski just like fucking puts it, like just slams his cup on the on the table. I fucking called it. You owe me fifty gold, Onslow. There weren't that many left, but Onslow just like mu like just murmurs under his breath, <laughs> throws the money down at relief at uh at relief and uh and Kowalski. It's a big jungle. It's. I do not blame you for missing a couple. Well, son, don't go around telling people, but that was the point of the mission. Really? Our job was to clear them out completely. Oh. Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all gone now. So I won't tell anybody else. I think the only other person that knows might be the uh, constable here. Relief just like looks left and right when you say that. Well, there goes our money. How did you get through the toads and their riveting, riveting trials? The, the what? If you went through the, if you went through the same path we did, you must have seen the giant miasma cloud formed by the toads, well, correct? That's, that's the thing. I don't think they went through the same path we did, or else we these came, things wouldn't have existed. Oh, we came from the north, son. Hmm. We I came mean, did, like yeah, didn't like, we as well? No, you came. You came from the. Uh, what you came from the west, heading to the east. Gotcha. They were here way before you guys showed up, and they were up further to the north. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. they, so whatever happened that they did, they pretty much regale you with the tale of how they chased them like down from a mountaintop to the to the bait to the uh, coastline. Well, must have been the only ones that uh, strayed the path. But yeah, there was a. In fact, this might be a good way for you to earn back. But uh, there's a bunch of. Basically, frogs out there that are potentially causing the sickness that's going on around here. Pro like you just, you just also just kind of like chuckles, and you're like, like that girthy, just like ooh, 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 kind of laugh. <laughs> like kind of just like slaps his stomach and looks at you and just goes, "Toads don't sound fun to hunt." Well, this one was uh, pretty big. How big would you say it was? Oh my, he was quite large. He he stood at kind of like gives like a height a basic height analysis with his hands. Roughly this tall, and he spewed this horrible putrid gas everywhere. <laughs> You'd love it. Also, he was the uh familiar of a I'm just gonna call it a wrath witch, because it's still dead, but it's still really angry. Kowalski just like kind of picks up his short sword and like just kind of brushes it with his finger. We allowed to kill it? I mean, it certainly doesn't want to die, but if it's causing the illness here, we I don't think anybody no. else. You kind, of yeah. just, like, you kind of just hear him just like, he like, he goes, <clears throat> and he like burps up fire from his alcohol. <sighs> That's good enough for me. Sounds like a fun job. I'd say Thanks be, for the offer. I'd say be careful though. These things were uh, pretty strong and its master was strong enough that even after death, it, uh, let's just say her house nearly ate more Us! Onslow kind of just like chuckles. Now, son, holds up a shotgun shell. Nothing stronger than this. It You'd put, be surprised! He puts, he puts it, like he, show, <laughs> like he shows you his elephant gun the size of you. And like just clicks it, clicks the shot back in. I have seen that kill quite a few things. You ever know what a man maw is, son? He turns and looks at Morgan, who's kind of just like, what the fuck is going on here this whole time? I know what that one is. Kind of like leans in, there's... His jowl is bigger than your head. It's not what you expect, I'll tell you that, from the name. Noted. No, sir, I do not know what a man maw is. His giant clawed hand slaps you on the back as he, like, kind of just, like, jovially puts you into his seat so you can sit down. <laughs> I don't blame you, because I killed it. <laughs> Wake's going to let him have that one. <laughs> He like turns and looks at you. <laughs> so now, 
We all told you what we're here for. So what exactly are you doing here then? Uh, let's just say it's a favor from an old friend. Ran into uh, Ziaka back in right. Really? I didn't expect her to actually want to move away from that fancy little island of hers. Well, I don't think she did want to, but uh, fate intervened. So now we're out here doing a favor for her. Uh, something that I can't really discuss openly, but... Ah, volition jargon, I get you. Something like that. All right, well, I don't know if there's much that we could do to help you, but if there is, just let us know. Uh, maybe there is. You've been here longer than we have. We're looking for uh, some fancy hoity-toity noble type. Also came down from right. He like kind of like lets out this raw, raw, raw rumbling hiss out of the back of his throat, and his smile turns to like this scowl. Ah, it does ring a bell then. Well, yeah, it does. As Kowalski kind of just like chuckles. She tried to patch him up, but he wouldn't let her. Hmm. Any idea where she uh, wandered off to? Yeah, she's right there talking to that giant dinosaur-looking thing. I look over. Valtara is talking to Micha. Hey, it's the two people we were going to hire talking to each other. Isn't that interesting? It's hmm. as if we could have skipped a step and hired both of them. Well, I've never met them formally. I should probably go introduce myself at the very least. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Go ahead right now. All right, you guys catch up, because they've got a lot of stories to tell you about hunting. Okay, yeah, go. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... I ever tell you the time I ever I snapped a deer's head clean off its body? What a fascinating story. Please tell me more. Then, go! Then he turned into it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that, I, I already walked away. All right, uh... I kind of was hoping that everyone would go because I don't want to exclude everyone from this. <laughs> That's fine. We all... Wake started wandering over and awkwardness ensues. I mean, <laughs> we you, know what? you know what? I have a better way to actually fit this in. Valtar is walking over with her. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, that saves time. Valtar kind of like now looks to you all and waves you down. I believe I found our nobleman. Or noble woman, I apologize. She turns and like fa she turns over to the side and there's Misha looking at all of you. Hi there, nice to meet you. Just give a friendly wave. She like looks to you two first and looks over to you. A oh, pleasure to meet you, sir. She kind of like stands like upright. So what you're looking at is I I've explained it to them before, but snow I leopard well, lady. Yeah, for she's a snow leopard lady, uh, dressed up in like a little bit of like a nun's clothing, but a little bit more of a sharper outfit. Uh, it looks way more battle ready. Uh, she's got the little hood uh, just taken off her head right now. And she has a plague doctor's mask kind of just hanging off her throat. It's uh, not not like the giant bird mask, but like it's the bird the bird part of the top of it. And then it's just the bottom jaw of the mask. I'm Wake. Oh, nice to meet you. Let me, let me go ahead and make sure I'm getting her last name right so I'm not fucking this. Yep, meet you as She takes your hand and shakes it. Doctor? Azmit. Azmit. A Z M I N T. Cool. Uh, this is Morgan Strong and Chromagill. Oh, I know. Nice to see you gentlemen again. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well, sweetheart. Thank you. That's good. It is a pleasure to see you again, ma'am. Mm. Now, you would think with how awkward this situation might be, Mr. Strong. Yes, I do remember your name. Of course you do. Because I just gave it to her. <laughs> she has a good memory. God, I wish that house killed me. Morgan. She <laughs> holds up the morning star. <laughs> well, she really got your Morgan. No, no. <laughs> it's like a little worry stone. <laughs> this is Morgan's time. <laughs> I'm in control. This is Morgan's Center. time. Uh, so, he, she just looks over to you and kind of smiles. Um, so, I hear, I heard from your, uh, your ally here, Miss Valtara, mm -hmm. that you are in search of a, how, of a noblewoman? Mm-hmm. Well, oh, she looks over to relieve Kowalski and Onslow. Oh, I'm sorry, am I disturbing anything? Oh, no, uh, but your name, Asmund, I think... Uh, pull out the other bottle of medicine that I took. I think I'm familiar with some of your work. We found some of this on the road on the way in. 
Oh dear, I guess I did drop it then. Well, no, this actually came from a uh, shipment that was on its way down. Mm. I did give these folk. Oh, are you speaking about the shipment that was lost a few hours ago? Yeah, we uh, we recovered it on our way down. Hmm, good show. I actually came here hoping I would be able to catch you before it was a little too late. I guess my worry and my haste was very well sought out and put fo- and put forward. Now, Mr. Strong, I don't hate you for picking your lovely new assistant here. She's actually quite fascinating. And she is very intelligent. You have found yourself a keeper. I'm glad you understand the choice we made. Hmm. Now, you say you need a noble woman for you to find passage over to the Emerald Coast? Uh, So said the... uh, Emerald Canal, sorry. Yeah, so said the constable anyway. You see Relieve kind of like look at you. You go Emerald Canal? Yeah, we're, You wish uh, die? Why do so? He doesn't speak common that well. Boy, yeah. howdy, do I wish I die? Well, he's on a suicide mission. Me, I just, uh... Hmm. It might mean the difference between just peace what? and whatever, the, whatever else is... Ha- whatever the alternative is. Relief kind of just, like, leans his long snout in front of your face. His caustic breath as his tongue comes out. Why not ask me kill you for price? I've tried. Boy, howdy. If the house didn't kill me, boy, you ain't gonna kill me. Now, son, you don't want to test that bite of his. He opens his mouth. It's The saliva's dripping out. It almost sounds like it's like grease on top of a griddle as he opens his mouth hmm. with it flashing his fangs at you. Morgan holds out his hand. Hold my hand. This has gotten strange. I don't know where this is going. Me either. Oh I'm flat. God, just... <laughs> Lingua mortis. Re- relief. Lingua mortis. I just speak to him in the language of the dead. And then let's go. So he just hears tormenting screams. And... Yep. Relief kind of just like slaps himself across the face. <laughs> I see. Relieve. We'll leave alone. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Kowalski just like looks at him. What did you do? Want to find out? Pulls up his gun. No. That's what I thought. Meech is just like clapping her hands, like, "Oh, this is so adorable. I love this already." She just looks so fucking, like, nonplussed about all this. She's super calm about all of this right now. I simply must do a psychiatric evaluation on you at some point. If all this touching and fear and whatnot, it would would bring a lot of insight into my book I've been writing. Hmm. I think I write a whole new omnibus for you if you just hold this hand. She kind of just, like, slaps. She, like, she actually takes up her hand. Oh, trust me, you're not prepared for that. You hear a, like, this infer- infernal voice in the back of your head. Huh? You, you, it's not a voice you're trying to transpire over to her. It's not lingua mortis. You don't hear the, you don't hear the language of the dead, but you hear gurbling and sloshing as if something's trying to speak to you in the back of your mind. Okay, pluck she, me, ch- pluck me. Ah, you speak with the dead then. That's adorable. Yep. Wake's just ordering a tea from a waiter. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna go sit in my corner now. <laughs> I want you to roll a knowledge history check for me. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a four, governor. A four? History, right? Yep. Yeah, that's a four. You have no fucking idea what she just said to you. You don't. You don't know what the language was, but you knew it came from her, and she spoke it to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I guess I should order us all a round of drinks. I mean, I am the noble one here. She oh, she uh, puts uh, sits herself down. Uh, what would you like, sir? Uh, just a tea would be fine. Ah, uh, of course. Fresh water is always delightful. Mr. Strong? Water. Oh, nonsense. You look like you need whiskey. Thank you kindly. Hmm. And then you watch. She looks looks to the other three boys and just goes, Oh, very well, Grog, for the rest of you, I guess. And they all just cheer. Yeah! 
They come back with the fucking, like, most expensive tea and drinks and everything for you guys. It has orange peel in it. Yep. Uh, she sits down, takes a cup of tea herself. Now, you need passage to, through the canal, yes? Yeah. Or at least, I pray you're not trying to go up the canal. Uh, no, we just need to get across, I believe. From there, we should be able to find our way. I see. This is all aligning far too well with what I've been having nagging feelings in the back of my mind over. Before I agree to this as quickly as possible, as our destinations seem to be in the same direction, would you mind if I disclose some possibly much-needed information about as to why I've been spying on all of you? Sure. Chromagill has no objections. He's just sitting quietly, dipping his finger into his water. <laughs> I was a very respected and skilled doctor in South Zealous. My talent came from reading and understanding the minds of my patients by sheer touch. I am quite, I am quite skilled in surgery as well. My profession would not allow me to do any sort of psychiatric evaluation if I didn't know how to at least handle someone under a knife. But my reputation in South Zealous has grown to the idea that I became nobility. I established a, psychi a psychiatric clinic for all of Zealous's nobility, and I've fallen under a very particular oath. I do not disclose my clients, shall we say, skeletons in the closet. No matter how much I've been bribed, no matter how much I've been forced into a situation to give any information to the government, to the Navy, to journalists or to anyone else who is not the client, I will not budge. It is a solemn vow, and I will make sure that it is done correctly and properly. Sounds like you've operated on the other side of the law a few times then. Hmm. You'd be right in that, but I also tend to try and not deal with that sort of thing anymore. It hmm. has unfortunately cost me my job, as I will soon tell you. And for a time, I did have a little bit of a fling with wanting to be a... She kind of, like, chuckles and, like, slurps down her teal again. A vigilante. You see, these notions I have in the back of my mind, they're not natural. Every time I close my eyes and sleep at night, I have dreams of knowledge from realms unknown seeping into the back of my head. I do not fear it. I do not reject it. And it is not malicious in its intent. It almost as if tells me of tales of events that will happen or may happen. And in return for allowing me to have these little fits of visions and hearing these voices tell me these things, they grant me insight of my patience. Unfortunately, one night, the voices did not, ha did, the voices did not occur in my mind when I dreamed. And that was the night I was actually pulled into a meeting for an interrogation. Not of myself, of course, but a gentleman who was unfortunately attacked by the onrush while trying to escape Eber Call. Who? That is unfortunately why I'm getting to that part, my friend. We tried to interrogate them, and they only spoke in weird tongues that no one was able to comprehend. While under the knife, I tried to patch him up as best I could, and then, unfortunately, it struck me. The voices I've been hearing for the longest time were coming from this man. By the, by the time I got to him, he was disheveled, scarred beyond all recognition. He didn't even look humanoid anymore. He spoke to me, told me of your little mission and your escapades and what it might mean for the sake of Giving you, the infor uh, giving you information he spoke to me about. He told me things. Things that, when I tried to relay back to my clients while I was performing the surgery, it caused the man, it caused the man himself to suffer a heart attack. Hmm. And when I spoke out these words, they called me a quack. Told me my tongue was impure 
and revoked me of my license. I did not wait for the paperwork to uh, I did not wait for the paperwork to set in. I fled from South Zealous and came here, as the information that was told to me was a sequence of numbers, pillars made of bone and sinew, and the fact that there will be a time where a fiend will fall before the machinations of a mechanical contraption. I cannot speak these sequences or these pillars to you for fear that I might cause someone else a heart attack. Right. Thus, gentlemen, why... I believe it is... Oh, I, I hate saying this word. It's, it's so garish. She like, takes her tea again. Eight. That I travel with you. I see. And you seem to budge a little bit more about the fact that Ibra Call was put into this situation, Mr. Wake. Yes. And why is that? I had friends there. Friends that went on a mission without me. I, I am scared to say that if I told you that these visions came to me but a few days before the fall of the kingdom itself, it would not be comforting. It wouldn't matter. As you said, it's not like you could have done anything. Even with that knowledge, nobody would have believed you. Well, I'm glad at least, hopefully, the lot of you believe me, at least. Tell me, in your visions, did anyone survive? The visions did not speak of any survivors. They only spoke a voice to me and granted me knowledge. And when I spoke to the man who was giving me this knowledge, and when he passed from the heart attack, a new voice entered my mind, and it was of my own. I don't know who this man was or what his... Oh, I, oh, the only thing I know of this man is that he spoke to me and said that if I was to go along with you, the new voice that's in my mind now would make me a saint. I don't know what that in, I don't know what that entails, Mr. Scalebound. However, like I said, these voices are not malicious. They speak in a kind voice, and they only wish to give me knowledge to further my lofty goals of of studying. She holds up her psych book. Well, since you already seem to know what we're up to, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Now, about our little voyage to South Zealous. Yeah, I figured uh, you might be instrumental in Figuring out how we're going to be doing that. Unfortunately, the voices don't tell me everything. I'm still working on that as well. Of course. I just, everything I've heard told us that we needed a noble woman or a noble person in order to try to even get somebody foolish enough to try to bring us across that canal. Tell me, how are you at stealth? Pretty I'm good. terrible at it! He says to the room. So, uh, on, on like a net scale, we're probably about okay. I see. Well, Mr. Strong's breastplate there might be a little bit of a noise pollution problem. And Miss Valtara, she just like looks up at her, and then Valtara just goes, I know, I know. I'm sorry, dear. You are formidable, and you are very, very intimidating. She actually shivers. You, like, watch the fur on her ears bristle when she says that, like, Ugh. I believe I know someone who might be able to help us get a ferry. However, they're within the quarantine zone. I see. There is a ship, I know, called the Oscuro. 
that has been known to actually take bribes in making and ferrying people into South Zealous. The local carve house that has been quarantined is where they usually stay. If you are not afraid of getting your hands dirty and possibly your lungs infected, taking a trip down there might be a wise idea. Well, I don't see many other options. I can go. Without lungs, perhaps I'll be safe from whatever this disease is that is plaguing everyone. He presents. <laughs> yeah, he goes, That's very brave of you, dear. We just have to make sure that the constables don't find out what we're doing. If That's they... true. If we're trying to hide this, I won't be very good at that. That's why I propose we do this in the dead of night. The Obscuro is most likely going to leave sometime tomorrow night. So we do have some time. Some time to figure out our route. Indeed. Also, we've been traveling all day, and uh, not going to lie, it would be a little nice to rest. My dogs are barking! I heard a human say that! It's a good Onslow, expression. Onslow turns and looks at you. I know, right? Those human slangs are just so strange. It's very fun! Merfolk don't really have any expression for that, but... I don't think they do. I don't really know a lot Valtara of Valtara looks around the room. I'm sorry, I have to ask. What's a dog? It's like a small, fuzzy creature that's very friendly. Common pet animal! Yeah, he knows. She just starts writing down. She just, like, pulls up her glasses and just starts writing. Find dog. <laughs> They're always good boys, from what I can tell. Always good boys. <laughs> Interesting, so there's no female of the species. No, there are good girls, too. Micha is just giggling to herself as this is going on. Well, gentlemen, she, like, kind of, like, looks to you. She shows off her badge uh, from South Zealous, uh, from her working in the psychiatric ward. This will be our ticket, so long as you have me around and we have this. I can just vouch that the rest of you are just my boarding party. So, I gave my end of the bargain. Unless you need it for anything else, or in case any of you need surgery, like you, Mr. Alligator. He kind of hisses and looks at her. Oh, you fucking child. If you would just let me sew it up, you would be fine. Their people take pride in the fact that they get scars. You fucking barbarians. Out of your mind, you are. Glad someone said it. <clears throat> Anslo turns and looks at you. <laughs> now, son. I'll have you know these scars are very important. They tell a tale. I got a few tales under this. The history of your people is written with pain. What a sad existence. Are you hungry? Nah, son, I ate a displacer beast on the way here. That is good. I feel that may be the greatest joy your people experience. He's not wrong. <laughs> the full belly. <laughs> uh, Micha actually puts you all up in sweets for the night. Yay! You just, just watch as she drops like a bag of gold. <laughs> it's like 1,500 right there. Well, you'll be sleeping well tonight, I assure you. Wake sleeping in the tub. <laughs> I don't exactly know how Chromagill will sleep. Just by a windowsill? <laughs> <laughs> Just stands in the room. Huh. <laughs> That's so much space. Just goes into the closet, just turns around facing the darkness. Like Bender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Much All right. Like home. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well show you this now. <gasps> is this Ooh, our, Micha's our new friend's character sheet? Yep. Mm -hmm. Micha is a plague doctor. What's, uh, explain for those at home what a plague doctor's specialties are. So, you know how healing is a very important factor to any uh, game whatsoever? But yeah. unfortunately, healing kind of like either is restricted to, hmm, either I drink this potion or I cast this magic, 
Gee, I wish there was a way we could just not have to use either of these two options and still be healed. Enter a Plague Doctor. Plague Doctors are the most convenient way to make sure that someone stays alive on the field without the use of magic or items. Okay, I was noticing she has two healing kits on her. Yep. They do run on stock to keep you healed, but they also have their own set of spells. They have their own set of abilities, and based on uh, the type of sub uh, subclass you take, she actually has a lot of uh, ways to... Uh, I apologize. She has a lot of ways to identify, like, how people react. So they're really... The way she is as a psychi uh, psychiatric plague doctor, she is absolutely excellent in social combat. Okay. That sounds like a lot of fun stuff to write up on the TFS Discord. <gasps> which I will put up. You feel free to join in now. <laughs> <laughs> which I will put up later tonight. Awesome. And she also... And also... There was an, also set of, uh, an awesome set of rules to make uh, variants for Tabaxi. So you know how in Volos there's only one Tabaxi race? Mm -hmm. uh, Walrock Productions, which is the uh, uh, Walrock Homebrew, which is the company that I wrote, that I got the information from, uh, they do variants on uh, Tabaxi. So there's like a lion Tabaxi, a panther one, a tiger one, a half Tabaxi if you want to be a cat person, like anime cat person. Hell right. Yeah. Or a... Uh, or there's also Grimalkin, which are pretty much just tiny cat people, so like halfling cats. Neat. Awesome. Yeah, a bunch of skills on there I don't quite recognize, but I'm guessing they will come into action, and then we will learn exactly what those do. Yep, so everyone, mm -hmm. unless you don't have anything else you want to do right now or want to discuss with anyone else in this tavern, get yourself back up to full. Yay! Oh, thank God. Now I'll never die. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> The closest I got to death, and now I'm backing away. I just imagine when you're sleeping at night, you're just like, Morningstar. Mm. I was actually about to say this. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yep, so you're all brought up to the uh, suites tonight. By the way, the fact that Misha put you all up in a, uh, in a very nice suite for the night, you get such a good night's rest that you get 10 temporary hit points. Ooh. Ooh. Great for the day we have to go around stealthing. I'm gonna start a fight on per just <laughs> just for the hell of just it. just to do it just to use these ten points. Take that, sick people! <laughs> just walks out in the middle of the street. Just goes, "Hey, you're sick." <laughs> no, I don't know how to fight cancer, but I will fight this guy with, with cancer. <laughs> you might be sick, but this is about to be ill. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Wake scale back, fight around the world. <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys pretty much get yourselves a nice day's rest. You take like probably like you sleep till like ten o'clock in the morning. All right, uh, would that be enough time for me to attune to my gauntlets? Uh, no, that takes twenty four. Okay, has not been a full day. Not a full day, unfortunately. Gotcha. So probably by the next day at ten o'clock at night, you'll be able to attune. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so at this point, uh, Relieve, Kowalski, and Onslow went off to on their own to do their own things. Uh, they're going to actually go to the constable to see about actually getting that job you mentioned. Uh, for the rest of you guys, you're still at the tavern. Valtara is still there. She's getting breakfast. You guys head downstairs to have breakfast. Micha is there, just fucking princess as ever, fucking sitting at a table, drinking tea, sitting in the... Soaking in the rays from the sunlight oh, in, she's got in the a window. Sunspot. Yeah, she's got a sunspot like any good cat. Uh, so yeah, now comes the time for you guys to decide what the fuck you're gonna do about getting into the quarantine zone in the middle of the day or wait till night. However, Micho will tell you that it's probably best you get this shit done sooner rather than later because the uh, the Obscuro will leave port this by, evening. by this evening. Hmm. All right. Well. First things first, I think we should go scout out the uh, border between here and the quarantine zone and see if there's any points that make for easier entry. I agree. Uh, the closest point you would get before alerting any guard would be the port because they don't have a complete quarantine cutoff there. Mm, that's convenient. However, uh, let's see. Yep, uh, Micho will also tell you. Oh, by the by... If you are going to be looking for anyone there, seek out a man called... Hmm, she, like, looks through her notes. 
Whittle Sykes. I believe he might be able to assist you. Whittle Sykes? He's a stout little dwarf with red hair. He's got a beard that drapes across the floor. I can't imagine how a man so shaggy looking is able to not catch the disease and still remain within the quarantine zone. Uh, dwarves are a stout bunch. Mm, indeed. Uh, do you know, perchance, what flag the Oscuro flies? What it might look like? It flies no flag. You'll probably find it'll probably be the same one disguised as the not disguised. I, I apologize. One that is also part of the ledger main. Hmm. Part of the ledger main, which is the navy. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, it's a naval ship. It's, it's a vorpal then. It, oh no! It's not a vorpal. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It does not run on magic. It is not a vorpal vessel. Just a naval ship. It's just it, no. It just flies a naval flag. Or, yeah, but yeah, considering the thing that they're doing, they want to be as inconspicuous as possible. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pretend we're like oceans elevening this, and anytime we get like information back there, it was just like earlier in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so at the port, do we see anything that's flying a? Uh, oh, who do you take with you? Oh, because you now have Valtara and Micha as well. I figured. Are we not all going? I, I guess I just. Meet just that. Meet just sounded like she wanted us to do the uh, to do the grunt work of this. She can go with you. She's, okay. She's like I said. Like you have Valtara and Meet you to take along with you if you want. But you know, since it is kind of a stealth mission, taking Valtara might not be such a hot idea, considering gonna... she's a giant fucking purple dinosaur. Hmm. Uh, I was noticing when I was looking at her statistics, Meet might not actually be that stealthy either. Uh, Indeed. Well, you don't have to take her too. Yeah. Yeah, she's only got the plus one on stealth. Yeah. With that. Yeah, so I think. But like uh, I said, she is. She may not be stealthy, but she is fucking astounding in social combat. <laughs> yeah. I was going to. Like, uh, basically, on our way out, we'd inform her that we're going to go scout the area. Give her the option to come along, basically. Not like, hey, you got to come along to help us, but. This is something that, uh, if you have any insight on, might be useful for us getting that ship. We're going to look for easy access to get to the quarantine zone. There may be a way for you to talk your way in, but otherwise we'll be sneaking. Well, I do have this. She flashes her badge. <laughs> she is a doctor. And for all they know, for all, for all the people of this city know, she's not been revoked. Mm, she's legit. I mean, her name's on, like, all the medicine bottles. Yep. You know, if we could, uh... Hmm. Well, the quarantine cuts off at the port. Wake's really stupid. I have to roll to see if I can actually use my Just plan. Just piece this together. It's above a 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, You'll have some kind of an idea, at least. Yeah. Well, if, uh... If we use that badge to get into the zone, legally... Perhaps we could get in there with uh, us under the guise of maybe some assistance or security for you under the fear that maybe you'll be mobbed by the people who are sick. She kind of just like giggles a little bit and she like looks to you. Are you going to play dress up as a constable then? I mean, it could be private security. I don't mean to be mean, gentlemen, but... The only person here who would probably make out for that in the best way possible would be Mr. Strong here. You seem the most average from the rest of your comrades. I nope. I you hear that, that, Morgan? You're normal. Well. You hear that, Morgan? You're normal. Shut the fuck up. I was also going to say, Chromagill here could probably pose as a sort of uh, experimental... Valtara is flipping Treatment. through her books as you say that. She's flipping through her books as she says that. Yeah, Wake knows that as like experimental treatment of sorts. Am I saying something? <laughs> no, she's like flipping through. There possibly could be a way we can make that work. We could... All right, I, I guess I'm the only one here who is a little bit more adept at magic than anyone else, but we could play out that you're my construct if we paint you up like a vex cap. I, I would enjoy this. I've never spoken as a Vex cap before, but I'm sure I could figure out the accent. You wouldn't speak at all. Or I could do that. 
Yeah, like Valtar just looks at you like, you could speak, but only speak to us because his spores, psychically linked to all of us, would actually be quite the best way for communication. Probably. I mean, just tell least... me what you need the others to hear, and I'll say it. All right. We need... All right. Well, if that part of the plan works, we just need to find some way to paint him up like a vex cap. Well, the general store should be open, and uh, if we can get some paints from there discreetly, we might be able to make this work, and I can try to sneak around while all attention is on you to try to find this guy we're looking for. Paint me like one of your South Zealous girls. There it is. I was waiting for it. Just, just let it happen, Zito. Grant! <laughs> Chroma Gill didn't say that. I'm sorry. No, everyone it's who's no. Everyone worried I... about the lore and canon. Grant, Grant, <laughs> you think I fucking care? <laughs> it's fine. The that ref- was a gag. The reference is lost on Chroma Gill. The reference is great. What do you want about? <laughs> All right. Well, you have that idea. That's what Wake pitches. Mm-hmm. Unless Morgan, you sounded like you had another idea. Well, you know there might be something for him to do as. well. Well, so you said the quarantine stops at the port. It's very... F- the quarantine zone of the port is flaky. Flaky. I mean, you can navigate the water very well. Yeah. You can get it from another angle. I mean, I could probably get in there through the port, maybe even just get straight onto the ship if anybody's working it. There we go. There is one thing I would worry about that. There are Sahagin that live within the docks. Domesticated or no, no, no such infestation. Thing. Got it. No, the domesticated ty- kind, but the highwayman kind. Oh, like I said, no such kind. Okay, organized perhaps. <laughs> organized crime. <laughs> There's a Sahagan mafia, is what I'm saying. Oh yeah. Well, it was worth a shot. No, you can still <laughs> do it. Just I can probably make my way past that. I mean. You just have to find some way to either gain their favor, speak to them, or even if this does happen in the first place, Beecha just tells you that that might be a problem. I like the idea of me being disguised. That sounds fun. (laughs) I recommend that plan. All right. All right, so go to the general store, get some paint. Volterra, you probably have some reference images for a Vex cap. I was, she like holds up a picture of a actually well-drawn version of the, of the toad that you guys fought. I like to draw sometimes. That's very nice. That's a very good drawing. Yeah, it almost looks exactly one-to-one to the toad that you guys fought. My God, the cross hatching. <laughs> takes the longest, doesn't it? Yeah. Kiara, Shira, shading. <laughs> we all took art history classes. I watched Strong I Bad. Took, I took the philosophy <laughs> apart. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you guys want to go to the general store and pick up, like, some kind of paint, uh, you can, but uh, there also is something that Val wants to bring up to you that she said that might actually be interesting. She doesn't know if it will be helpful, but it is still something to possibly consider. What's that? While she was at the magic store, there were a couple of interesting items there. Uh, let me go ahead and get the paperwork here. Here we are. Ah, okay. <laughs> they were selling a few odds and ends and weird, like, materials, like esoteric alchemic components that work for all kinds of things. So you could get paints there if you want them to have some kind of magical resources. However, uh, she doesn't know if this will be helpful, but if we are trying to, like, sneak or do something to maybe, like, blow people off your scent. Uh, The magic shop was selling something called a smoker's wand. Uh, It was mostly sold to children just so they can have, like, fun and pretend like they're being cool smokers. Smoke. Yeah, smoke. (laughs) It's candy cigarettes. Uh, Yeah, they're pretty much like candy cigarettes at that point, but it's a a magic wand. The wand, as long... uh, The wand is long and straight and smells vaguely of smoke. As a bonus action, you can hold the tip of the wand to your mouth... Inhale and breathe out a plume of smoke as if drawing from a, t- a pipe of tobacco. And the longer you hold it to your mouth, the more you actually exhale. I see. So 
They could maybe make a big old cloud of smoke to hide behind as you're... Uh... And with the mist of the fog that rolls in, that actually could be a cover. Possibly. Hmm. Not a bad plan. Chromagill loves the idea of setting up a smoke screen, but will not bring up the fact that he does not have a mouth. <laughs> so it's not a tool he can use. No. He wants to You can. <gasps> you can. Uh, I'm going to roll a knowledge history check for Valtara to see if she actually can figure that out for you. It seems like a fun tool, but alas, my my orificeless face will not provide me a way with which to inhale and exhale. But you are a mushroom. Could you not use your gills instead? So that means that you could make a fucking plume of smoke. <laughs> I could be a fucking living smoke machine. Yep. This does sound entertaining. Perhaps this would work. Well, just as a diversionary action anyway. I look up. I... I basically looked at the group. If I'm supposed to be a construct, would this distract from that job, or would I do this later? No, I would probably do my best to make it out that it's part of your construction. At the very least, it would be a good plan B in case, uh, in case you need to make a quick getaway. Then yes, I would love to have this wand! <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to have to go to the shop and buy this wand. Uh, the wand itself costs 120 gold. Come on, Mitra put us up in sweets. And she's, not gonna, <laughs> she's not going to splurge Are you, you going to fucking look at Mitra and ask her that? Actually, yes. Uh, Chromagill doesn't have... <laughs> Chromagill has no sense for how rude this would come off. <laughs> He's just going to look over. That's terrific. And with Mitra's boundless wealth, it'll be easy to obtain. If I am to be a construct because of my skills of being a mushroom, then perhaps your skill of being wealthy can provide us the tools we need. Are you insinuating I'm made of money? Persuasion. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> oh, that's right, you're a forest creature. That's not how economics work, dear. Oh, I, I assumed we just get... As part of the team, offered our skills to one another freely. I, I, I shall try to find... I may be private practice, but I still work for money. I understand. I don't understand, Morgan. Why won't she help us? <laughs> God, I'm your rocket raccoon. You know, even when you're whispering, we can all hear you. Morgan, is that true? Yes, dear, we yeah. can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Val just goes, yeah, we can. Well, I, I, I suppose I can buy this fun smoke wand that we will use for an escape. There are other things you could possibly buy I will throw in here as well. Uh, apart from any other like magical scrolls that you want to pick up, like maybe some basic cantrips from a clerical spell or a wizard's uh, spell list, uh, there is also the following things here. Do, 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 do. Here we go. There is a small metal trilobite thing called a yith scarab. Uh, and there is also what looks like a very, very pompous looking human with a, uh, human face sticking out of a, out of a stick. Uh, it's not a wand. It looks like it's the hilt of some kind of weapon. So it just looks like a very metal stick with a face carving on it. The face kind of like has like that like it pretty much looks like a very pompous, a very smiley person, and he's wearing a checkered pop collar in the in the art in the uh, artwork of this uh, face. It is called uh, Malkalite's armored stick, uh, armory stick. It, did you get a description on what it does? It looks yes, fascinating. Uh, Malkalite is a war mage famous in South Zealous for turning combat into a magical sport for high society wizards. The player must choose a command word to activate the stick and then roll a 1d12 to transform the stick into a masterwork weapon from a list I have here. Uh, while holding this weapon in both hands, you could use a bonus action to speak your command and magically separate the weapon into two different weapons, holding one in each hand. You could also use a bonus action to speak the same command to reverse the process into a larger one. So the D12 determines what weapon it would turn into? Yes. Okay. Hmm. It's fucking kite sight. 
Uh, and the Yith Scarab, a living metal trilobite that has a uh, that that is applied to the flesh of a creature. Depending on the body part the scarab is applied to, it doubles the proficiency of a skill of the DM's choice. If the scarab is forcibly removed, it will release a psychic shock uh, to the pl uh, eh. It will release a psychic shock so potent it instantly drops the user unconscious. The scarab will release itself after 12 hours and then will take another 12 to reuse. All right, it's a blue beetle, kind of. Yeah. My, my hands are not skilled for multiple weapons, so that, that stick does not sound like it would be useful for me. And like I said, you could also pick uh, scrolls mm -hmm. of uh, cantrips for clerics and wizards from this shop. Can't think of any of those that I would particularly be looking for right now. There is, however, one that is uh, very interesting to you, Chromagill. Uh, remember that wizard who uh, applied moisture to you that actually gave you the ability to breathe within the mist? Yes. Uh, that spell is actually available as a cantrip. Ooh. For a scroll, anyway. Uh, how much is it? It would cost 100 bucks to make it into a scroll. Well, that would be, well, that does sound nice. I, I'll, I'll hold off for now. A tad, a tad pricey for this, for this mushroom's pockets. Okay. Uh, and folds of flesh where he holds his gold. <laughs> uh. <laughs> just set the bag. <laughs> I, the way I'm looking at it is just his arms and legs are covered in like kind of little like kind of just like mushroomy folds and he can just shove stuff in there and it stays. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So <laughs> the mushroom of many pockets. All right, the smoker's wand is there for 120. The uh, Yith scarab is there for 400, and Malkalite's armory uh, armory stick is there for 50, uh, because it uh, depending on what you get, you could get a bargain or you could get it ripped off. So you said it's. 120 for the stick and 100 for the scroll? Yes. You know what? I'm going to get both of those, and that just gets rid of the rest of Chromagill's money, which, as far as he can, is concerned, is what you do with money. I will give you the name of that spell at the end of the game, because okay. I don't, I forgot to write it down, okay. but I do know what it is, so I can give that to you later. Uh, and with this Ocean Eleven's plan, I feel like this is actually a really good stopping point. I was going to say, just for the shtick, I'm buying the stick. Oh, you are? You're going to buy yeah. Malachite's Armory stick? Yes. All right, cool. So a man at arms over here. The moment. All right. I, yeah, so now I got I lots need you, of things. I need you to now tell me the magical word you want to use for this thing to separate. Uh, like as in to separate it, into doubles. Yes. It yeah. acts as a bonus action, but if you say the magic word, it splits apart and did reforms. You, did you say it was the? Uh, is it? Does it have to be the same incantation to put it back together? Yes. Okay. So. I guess calling it like you know a thing that is and, and specifically only he, for separating. Yeah, and even if you were to say the word, mm -hmm. only he could do it okay. as long as he's holding the weapon. Mm -hmm. Man, now now there's pressure. It's tough coming up with your own magic because you words. Got, you got to say the word, and then I need you to roll a one d twelve and tell me what it is. Clink back was a desperation move on my part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Jawsome. All right. So yeah. when you say Jawsome, roll me a 1d12. <laughs> Jawsome! Eight. Eight? All right. Uh, <laughs> Malkalite's face contorts from a smile to a wink, and then it shrinks back in, and you watch as the stick begins to grow and thin out. Uh, its joint form is a pike. So you now have a masterwork pike. <laughs> say and now if you say the magic word again, Jawsome! You have to hold it into both hands. Jawsome! <laughs> it splits apart into two spears. Tink. <laughs> and now if you put them together and say it again, Jawsome! It reforms back into a pike. <laughs> cool. And that's where we'll end tonight. <laughs> And Chromagill's just over here with smoke pouring out of his gills. That looks fun! <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Morgan with the Morning Star. Yeah. Quiet Rocking back and forth. Quiet time for Morgan. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Now Wake is fucking Gilgamesh. <laughs> <laughs> Every weapon latched to him. Yep, so there you go. And I feel like this is a really good natural stopping point. 
That's a ah. natural wonder stopping point. Uh, we do have art. We I do did. have art. Yes. Fan art time. I, Boy, uh, I will let you uh, hold this one because you uh, you know what they are. Indeed. Uh, so. Let me go ahead and actually get to the page first, though, before Excellent. we do so. No problem. Cross page. I need, I need to pretty up this page again. I, I made it a while ago and intended to do more with it, but All right. I have not since. So uh, number one. Ooh, Ooh, look at that boy! Oh, from Kyle Rabosi, it's a rubber hose chromagill. He looks so fun! Monochrome gill. Oh, ooh, ah, ooh, all right, oh. okay. Well, now he's gonna have the fucking, like, the little flaps. So, how I imagine them, it's like, you know, like, uh, in cartoons where it's like that curtain around a tub? Yeah. So it's like that, but it's the wax leather. Okay, all right. Yeah, like, just kind of draping over? Yeah, it drapes over his arm, but it's attached to the shoulder pad, so it's like... Like All right, uh, next up. From RT, <laughs> yeah! from RT Joe 94. I believe, if you, if you look at my uh, wingdings yep. text. Yep. Uh, mushroom, from, look out, I'm the lookout. The oh, mushroom okay. is the lookout. That's me. And then there's Morgan just hobbling behind the cart, dying. <laughs> I love just drawing. Don't worry, I got the back here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. hand in the pocket. Everything's fine. Hold on, <laughs> Watching the old caboose, don't you worry, Chroma Gill. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna poor, get them all. And poor Valtar just like, get the fuck out of this cart. <laughs> no, I like it in here. <laughs> no, it's fun. <laughs> all right, next up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from uh, Jonathan Grafer. We have that, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, they, it's already been sent here. They, they oh, sent shit, it to really? us. We, we yeah. have it sitting it was, on the desk in the gaming room. Yeah, that's right. I, I did not see it. I yeah. apologize. Uh, I should have. Yeah, we opened it up, I think it was two weeks ago. It was either, yeah, I, I, yeah, because yeah. Two Fridays ago. Yes, yeah. That it, makes it was, sense. Was, I didn't see that. It was so, Friday yeah. before last. It's it's really cool. Like, yeah. You got to see, like, the crafting work on the face is incredible. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. There were two pictures here, but I wanted to get the one that, like, showed it off a little bit better. Makes sense to me. All right, next up. From Scrap Paper oh, 22, uh, Evil Morgan, the dark spiritualist actively pulling out the souls of his allies to prolong his life at the cost of their unending pain. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like, what's his face from Total Recall? With oh, yeah! Oh, that fucking gross individual. <laughs> we talked about the lady with the three boobs. That's the only one I remember from Total Recall. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's the guy with like, the little baby guy on yeah. him. It's his growth. I vaguely remember that. I haven't seen Total Recall. Not a Duma! I'm a Duma. <laughs> All right, next up. Thanks, Cartman. No problem. Another one from uh, Scrap Paper 22. This is Evil Valtara. I like the dino, dino Girl, so here's her evil design. Took some debating how to twist her dark. Unorthodox researcher look inside, looks inside new creatures to see how they tick and struggle to find any dark knowledge. I like it. Creepy triceratops. Yeah. The broken horn is really cool. To yeah, me. it is. It's a nice touch. I want to know what's it. Oh, wait, no, it's the books. I was like, what's in that chest? I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's it's all her books what's locked together. What's in the together. box? It's, it's a locked down stack of books. Man, I just, I love the idea now that Valtara has like a giant thick book and she opens it and it's just the thing that hides liquor. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to need this. Nobody knows. <laughs> this is my special book. Don't tell nobody. Everyone's got a little special keepsake now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff. Next up. Thanks, Kyle, the scrap paper. From Artsy Joe, if Grammy joined. <laughs> <laughs> she has a flamethrower, for fuck's sake. Is that a flamethrower? She's just holding a cannon. That is a flamethrower. Bazooka? <laughs> Either way, we're all on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course, cool guys don't look at explosions. Pretty much. The golden hand looks so Man, I love high. how I fucking painted hags in this universe. Yeah. They're just like the most omnipotent creatures ever. I can't wait for us to fight whoever the final villain is. We get like the worst roles and then just fucking bullshit. Also, Grammy's there and that freaked the fuck out of this guy and you win. <laughs> Grammy just walks out like, you asshole. <laughs> Slaps him in the face. <laughs> Go back! Fine. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Mother, what are you doing topside? <laughs> Thank you so much. Stop hitting your new father-in-law! <laughs> oh back. my god! <laughs> oh jeez. Next up. Oh, <laughs> oh he's so done. From he's Jesper doing. PRL. That's adorable. The bestest boy. You even got your flaps. Hello, little friend. You look like you have secrets to tell. Tell them all. How adorable. <laughs> 
Even the babies talk. Good idea. Then they'll never be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how dark could we turn Chroma go with his effort of, I just want people to be happy. Life seems miserable. <laughs> I, just... I shall end world hunger by ending the world. Oh my God, you, this all flips on its fucking head and Chroma Gill's the BBEG. <laughs> yeah, it turns out that I, I find the source of this darkness. I'm like, you're kind of right. If everyone was dead, it'd be better. Let's do it. What drives <laughs> a mushroom to become neutral? <laughs> all right, next up. Ziga Exeron. Aww. Aww. The little score bunny. I don't care if his his fire feet. You can't keep him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you see the fucking the, the meme someone did earlier today? It's just the kid going, excuse my potty mouth, but shut the fuck up! <laughs> I love the current meme going around with all the uh you know the new Pokemon Pro tags, but just quoted with Scottish Twitter. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, did Quite you good. see? That a Spain news article took the took one of the meme pictures, so now people in Spain actually believe that there's a Pokemon sword, shield, and gun. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was a really quick shop when that turned around, though. Oh yeah. And then someone made a real legendary out of it. <laughs> of all three. Of all three today, yeah. So who do we think is telling Nedra this? Because she is because because they are saying, I don't care if he it's has little fire feet, you Sheldon? can't. Keep probably that. Sheldon. It's probably Sheldon. He's the strict one. Okay. We could be like, oh yeah. You totally I'm into keep this. that. That like every, every single fucking thing that's flammable in the monastery just goes up in smoke. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't You're cleaning this so hard, Wake. But I would. It's not even my bunny. <laughs> I'm busy saving the world. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. Next up. She's your. She's Aww. your disciple, Wake. From uh oh geez the my Twitter's cutting out I'm sorry the blind artist one it's adorable in quotes and I love this because it's how thematic it is when autumn falls oh. yeah I was gonna say I got a very autumn feel from this one so very good it is adorable man no when one knows what the font's when about you give except it me some honey yep when you were saying they were fishing for yits I've kept thinking yes. it. Y I T H. Yes. Okay, so just a little different. Yeah. But I was like, they're they're fishing up our dragon. I'm like, wait, Chroma Girl doesn't know that. I'll say nothing. And then you just talk like it's normal, like, oh, well, I must be mistaken. What are those? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. If we if, see him. If Wake has to go through the water, you might. Next up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I understand now. From Bangarang Aliko, get out yeah. of the, get out of the cart, Chromagill. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> click. I just don't get to see his sad eyes very often because they have to form. So it takes time to form. It takes time to form. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I felt oh. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Chromagill? Yes. Yeah, I was fine. Just very sad yesterday. <laughs> I am now. Thank you so much. Next up. Can only display an emotion after Aww. it passes. Oh, it's Valtara. I, okay. I, I When I first saw this, I'm just like, it's silly, but I love the clown pants. She looks very uh, 1930s. Yes, exactly. Explorer. Like oh. an avi like a blimp aviator. Yeah. yeah. I get kind of like a, like this is the, like kind of like an elderly Valtara, Valtara yeah. to me. Like I, I, I look at this. Like this, this is this the is the end of my day. This is this is the librarian you meet after she's gone around the whole world and researched everything. I, I know get, everything, I child. Get a the banana splits vibe. Yeah, is right. She, she's like the sixth member of the banana splits. <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be radical as hell. And oh, by the way, this is Jasper PRL. So thank you so yeah. much. I love this. They don't make boots in my size back in my day. They barely even made pants for us. Gram so we had to walk around without pantaloons. Okay, Gra Grandma, that's Gram great. Grandma, you're like 15 sizes bigger than you used to be. We used to wear frocks <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you ever you seen a Triceratops wear Crocs? It was the only thing that would fit, which we called tight at the time. You kids. Which was the method of the day. You kids wouldn't remember the tree stars, but oh my. <laughs> they were delicious. Back in the Great Valley. <laughs> oh God. Not again. Where'd that asshole Littlefoot get up to? All right, we call him Bigfoot now. All right, well, now I have to fucking say it. Thanks, Grant. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> Now, have fun having that song stuck in your fucking head, chat. <coughs> Next up. 
from Marvel oh, Poison. Adorable. I was little say, the moment little it tiny up. snake. Snake girl. Oh, yeah. Hiding the three other versions of her head underneath the cloak. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the glamour shot. She doesn't want them in that. Don't, like, don't let them know. Like, don't let them Bitch, know. you told us the photo op was two hours ago! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> take it now. <laughs> take it now. Just now, 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 now. Yeah, damn it! <laughs> let me get this cute smile. <laughs> Got it. How would so, you know this one told lies? He told you the truth! <laughs> well, I lied to both of you. Now shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I have free will. <laughs> Next up. Ooh. Speaking of. Yep. From uh, Psychic Space Cow. Woo. I love the, the wrapped up snouts so that they can't, they will not speak out of turn. Hell yeah. Mm. Very, very Dark Souls-esque, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely get that vibe. I feel like her eyes, she just looks very nonplussed about whatever she is encountering. Yeah, like, she's just like, oh, God, all right, do you want to talk to this one or do you want to talk to this one? I don't know. Everybody's got split personalities these days. Let me give you the spiel real quick. One tells lies, one tells the truth. What about you? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I tell you what I want to tell you. She's just like eating ice cream. I'm going to eat this before dinner. You can't <laughs> stop me. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> no, it's a lie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next up. Oh, man. Yo! Yeah, yeah, we looked at that one, uh, I think, uh, a couple Fridays ago. I, I fucking love all the texture work on this, especially when you can, like, zoom in on it. From Haunted Toaster Zero. By the way, the bloater fish. Yeah, I right? Know. My favorite thing about this is the bloater fish. The, the little baby bloater fish suckling on it, too. Yeah. And, like, one's on its eye and everything, and, like, I j it just makes sense because don't they miss. don't fucking care! <laughs> I love that its eyes also look like they have like a little bit of like a uh, just like a film over them that has yeah. another bout of water in them because it looks like they have bubbles rising in their eyes. Man, now I'm actually fucking very interested in making a totem, a barbarian totem path that is a bloater fish. <laughs> yes, I I think that's my next project now. I hadn't really noticed the uh, like the shading on like the knees and mm -hmm. stuff and how oh, yeah. detailed yeah, it goes into like her scales and stuff. That's that looks really good. Yeah, like I, I especially love like that. I, I don't know what you call that on a Triceratops, but like the headdress the frill. piece. The frill. And, okay, the frill. And I love all the uh, little decorations that she has on the all of her piercings horns. piercings and the horns and everything. Also, yeah. one of my favorite touches that you probably don't notice on first glance just because everything on here is just so fucking cool, but the glasses are actually a ring on the horn. On the horn, and yeah. Like, they don't have any other pieces. It's just there. Like you still might, okay, I got to read for a sec. Think. You know, there are times where I think to myself, should I have given like these characters an even bigger physical description or maybe even artwork to go with it? But then when shit like this happens, I'm just like, no, it was a good idea to not do that. Nah, vague as you can go and then see what comes in. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Haunted Toaster. Next up. Aww. <laughs> New crew. The Who family this? pick. It's the family pick. I'm, I'm trying to get to it. It actually slowed down for me. Sorry. No worries. Mm -hmm. yep, my, it happens to me all the time. Yeah, my thing fucking freaked out. And also, this phone is dying. I need to buy a new one. Oh, no. Chromagill almost looks upset in this picture. Like, he's just like, what? Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, what so are I'm, we doing? He was just upset yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from Artie right. Shilly. He was trying to smile for the picture. <laughs> uh, from, uh... I am smiling. R.D. Shilly. Massive Chromagill is now the only way I see him. First time posting something that's just a little doodle. Yo, listen. This is good for just a little doodle. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's great. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you so much. I love the little mushrooms on his shoulders, too. Yeah, I love when people draw the extra mushrooms on top of them. Uh, next up. That's, that's it. That's it. That's that's it. One. All right. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here. <laughs> it's been great having you. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. Later, Wonders. Bye.